Oh, wait, Miles time out, time out. We actually have a very special guest joining us right now for a new segment on the show. Bring him in. New special guest. Can't wait to, to see how this goes. It's Francis. Oh, hey, Francis. Oh, Francis. <laughs> What's up, dude? Oh. Great to see you. Do you want to talk some studies? Yeah. He's going to come out of solitary and drop himself like Brooks and Shawshank, but he doesn't weigh enough for it to actually. He might be the funniest person that works here. Yeah. Oh, Stop. dude. Who's that? He's Michael. Beer. Beer. He's the one. He's the one Arian that I sent you the tweet of yesterday with Billy's thing. With the oh, guy oh, rapping. I, I thought that was just a fan, yo. No, no, that's he works. He's our data guy. <laughs> Best comedy. He's our like head data engineer. He's, he's hysterical. Like, he's like randomly very, very smart, but he is the funniest dude, especially on Twitter. Like, so have, I, um, have I met him? No, I don't no. think so. He's a he's a great troll. He is. We gotta follow him. He's, he's one of the so funniest funny. Canadians I've ever met. Just just Canadian. How, though. how many funny Canadians have you met? <laughs> no, I mean like usually Canadians are more reserved. He's like, I went to school with a bunch of Canadians, and they're not really funny. Greer is fucking funny. Greer is so funny. Mike Greer. <laughs> when we walk pussy, I put it on red. <laughs> you, know, you know what's the most annoying thing about that whole thing? <laughs> you doing it. <laughs> no, it's that I could do a much better African accent. <laughs> In multiple, that's that's what he gets from it. This, I just, I don't like your brain, bro. At least tell me that we're taping right now. Yes, we are. We are. Fuck. Well, I'm not. Okay. Well, just go yeah, ahead. Just go. You, you guys hit record. I wanna, I wanna start with that sentence right there. That's <laughs> the most annoying part. Uh, Billy. Okay, the floor is yours. Let's hear it. <laughs> no, I can do much better African accents. Please don't. Just don't. I can do. I can do white South African. Don't mind. I can do. It. You do that one. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. I, I just need to get it. But uh, that's just the blood diamond accent. Like I wasn't trying to do an accent. I okay, was literally it. just do, trying to do the blood diamond. I want to hear Billy Billy football's you want Leo. To, you want to uh, do Afrikaans? This this. That's I, Russian. You're I just gotta Russian get into it. No, it's because it's Dutch, so it's a, South South a little Africa, bit. Sir. I'm from South Africa. It's sir. from South Africa. Yes, I was in Cape Town, and I was uh, watching Springboks on the TV. Whoa. And uh, I'm just saying. Oh, you Spring don't know box. white South African, do you? What do you? Yes, bro. The you don't sound like it. Number Ernie three. L's. I was watching it on the TV. And, uh, Ernie L's is South African. Brooks Kipka. Brooks Kipka. <laughs> That's the funnest. That I think Brooks saying Brooks Kipka. Saying Brooks Kepka with a South African accent might be the funnest thing to say. He had my robust tea. What are your favorite? Everyone's got like board. a fun thing, a favorite thing to say, just the the act of saying a word. I think Brooks Kipka. All I right, think so that's 1-1 one, one for me. This is, robust. this is dope. So if you say... Beer can in Australian, that's the same thing as bacon in Jamaican. Say it. Beer can. Beer can. Which one did I say? <laughs> Laura Marcy. Beer can. Beer can. <laughs> <laughs> and if you say uh, rise yep. <laughs> up lights, it sounds like you're saying razor blades in Australia. <laughs> yeah. That one's so funny. Say it. Rise up lights. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the exact so reason. Funny. Is there a the, word for those? I feel like there's got to be a word for some sort of rise of lights. Let's wait. Oh, whatever that is. That's, that's homophones. <laughs> for like homophones and different accents. Homophones. Yeah. Because you, sa- you get what I'm saying. Like if you say things in different cadences and in different accents, it can mean two different things. Just something to think about. Homo rise accents. Of, rise of lights. Rise of lights. It's fucking with me. Raise a I, I don't have an Australian. I don't shit at Australian accents, but when I say that, I hear it, and it's kind of freaking me out a little bit. What about dialect? What is that? Dialect? It's, di- it's a dialect. Dialect. Oh, it means two different things yeah. in two different languages. That's pretty good. We're bilecting right now. We're bilectual. Yes, we. Are, yeah. <laughs> we can get there. We can get there. Um, now I want right, to say well, things in Australian accents. Welcome I was back. in the bush. Welcome back to Macrodosing. It's Wednesday. 
It's actually Thursday when you're listening to this. It's Thursday. It's, you're it's listening March to 7th. this. You watched uh, Last Chance Uganda episode two last night because uh, it's now available. Please go tune in. It is. It is. I'm very excited to see that. I haven't watched it yet, but I will because I'm very, very into the storyline. We're getting some football stuff, which is great. I'm, I'm a big fan of, of the series and uh, Billy's doing a great job um, addressing concerns and comments that he may have been affecting an African accent. Uh, I think Billy's just a sponge. That's Billy. If you were to describe Billy in one way, he just he he assimilates to whatever environment he happens to be in. So right now he's in a Bitcoin farm. So that's why you hear some of the libertarian tech bro stuff that he's been saying recently. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Just sponge it up. I'm a chameleon. I just blend in. Yeah. Uh, so welcome back, guys. Got a lot of stuff to get into today. We're going to talk today about fluoride i actually this was a, a very interesting thing for me to look into i don't know how you guys felt about it um but it took me in some directions i was not expecting to go in so um have a have a good honest intellectual conversation about the history of the fluoridization of water and some of the controversies around it whether or not they're bullshit whether or not they've been co-opted for other purposes and um and where they bring us today so look, um, it's an anti-irish bioweapon that's all it is why are you saying the Irish have yellow teeth? We'll we'll get into it. We'll get into it. Everything's anti-Irish to Billy. <laughs> it is. Uh, we've got some some stuff going on in the news right now. Billy, what's on your sheet? Walk us through your sheet. First off, we got Nikki Haley dropping out. Couldn't stump the Trump. All right, and, bozo. <laughs> yeah, I mean, guys, we you gotta admit the guy just steamrolled his entire competition without even stepping in a debate. It does, what, do you mean, it is, what do you mean you ha you have to admit? I've been saying this. Matter of fact, Big T challenged me on this. I said he's going. He is the Republican Party. He was like, no. And this is when he was banging for Ron DeSantis. This was probably like a year and some change. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, no, he is the Republican Party. Like that's just where it is. Like Ron no should have had a chance. He was just wholly incompetent. No, no. He nobody stands a chance until he can no longer run for president. He is where the Republican Party is because he. I think where politics at is at right now is is like it's just teams banging banging against each other. So he's the best coach for banging against the left. Like and there's no they don't give a fuck. Nobody gives a fuck about policy, bro. Nobody cares. That is true. Change the left. If you're a Republican that that doesn't like Donald Trump, you're now at the point where you're like, okay, well, I'm still gonna vote for him because he's I I'd rather not be labeled as like an anti-Trumper or mm -hmm. a uh, you know, a, a sellout, a rhino. I don't want to be called a rhino. So uh, Republican has become a synonym for Donald Trump, the party of Donald Trump. That's just what it is right now. And uh, the Democratic side, they're, I, are there like hardcore Joe Biden fans? I Actually, I'll say this. I'm excited to run it back. Let's run 2020 back, guys. These guys are fantastic candidates. They've risen to the top <laughs> of the field. And I think they've both proven that they can run the country effectively and they can they can enact some serious change and lead us in the right direction. So whether you're a Donald Trump fan or a Joe Biden fan, I think there's a lot of common ground there to just celebrate the meritocracy in America. It's going to be a hell of a series. It's going to be a, it should be it should be best of 3. This the right? so, so Trump's got to win twice. Trump should have to win well, twice. I mean, right now, honestly, the best way to get rid of Trump would be letting him win and then he's done after 4 years. And then you think you think Donald Trump is going to just be like, okay, I'm done after four years. Yeah, dude, that's the fucking constitution. If he tries to go over four, two term, <laughs> two, four year terms, I will be like, oh shit, this is out of control. We got that's a tyrant, tyrant that's watch. Your, that's your line. That's your line. Dude, yeah, he, because he I mean, does not, up he does George not give Walker. a fuck. Dude, he's not going to go over two terms, four years. Like that is legit tyrant shit. And George yeah. Washington, who was the dude who was like, I just spent, my whole military career fighting against tyrants. I'm not going to be a tyrant. They wanted to make him king for life, but he was like, no, I'm getting out of here. That That's the line. That's George Washington that did that. Donald yeah. Trump will will 100% try to stay president if he wins no, again. No, no, I no. I don't. He's not going to pull some Putin ridiculous. shit. This, like is, this is P left T. No, talking. no, yeah, no. Dude, I, we that's know enough, Trump we derangement know, syndrome, bro. We know. No, yeah. no it's not. He don't it give is, a fuck dude. about people. He don't people, give a fuck about the Constitution. People he, said he, he wasn't going to accept if he lost the last time and... 
you Dude, guys are Donald Trump will be like, I'm the only one. Our country's in such bad shape and we're under such attack from the left that I'm the only one that knows how to save it. I'm the only one for the interest of the country. Much like Abraham Lincoln, I need to do this to keep the country together. That's what he'll say. I listen, I'm 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 not out here banging for Joe Biden. I'm not out here having Trump derangement syndrome. I'm just saying like I'm just saying a fact. Okay. If That's and not a when fact. Trump That's becomes president again, I will bet you a significant amount of money that he won't try to run again. Yeah, he's going I, to. I'm not saying he's going to like end up being able to do it, but he will try to run again. We'll need to Dude's set some parameters yeah, around what million. that means. But yeah, I will bet you. Okay. A lot Dude's on of the money. hook for 400 million. He just wants to get a good like presidential career, which means winning two terms. And then he wants to hang his fucking jersey in the rafters and go back to being rich. The dude has he's on the hook for 400 million. He would not be on the hook for 400 million dollars if he had not been involved in this presidential thing. He's he's not going to go it has he's nothing gonna, to do with what I'm talking about. I'm, I, Billy, you we, we we know we know Donald, we know Donald. We're we can talk as friends here. Trump Trump likes Donald Trump, right? He's I don't see him like seating I the could presidency. See him, I could see him being a political advisor, but I could not see him doing a Putin and running like if for a no, different I'm, part of office, changing I'm, the laws. I'm not that saying is, he's I'm that not, is kangaroo I, court shit. That I'm is not like, saying he's going to like declare himself king. I'm saying that like there is precedent. And if you're Donald Trump, you would look back at precedent and be like, well, FDR, he served four terms. Um, if if there is an extenuating circumstance such as the future of our country is under attack, uh, then and I'm the only one that I can trust to save it then yes, I would like to run for a third term and he'll put that out there. And who knows if, if Congress is going to like try to enact an amendment or whatever. I'm just looking for that. If you, th if you think that that's beyond the realm of possibility, I don't think that you know the man. Dude, he would have done that during COVID. He would have declared some sort, if he was really like that, it, this is, I, I think you're, you're being a little like fringe with this PFD. I'm, I'm just going to say, I'm going to call it out and say it. as someone who's been fringe, as a fringe guy, like, you know, I got a grab bag. I got, you know, just in case. I think that's a fringe take. Okay. Well, I mean, he he also, there were people that said that, like, if he lost the election, he wouldn't try to stick around. And people were like, oh, no, that's fringe shit to say that he would. Like, that's exactly what they were called. If you said, like, oh, if Trump loses, he'll he'll try to figure out a way to remain in office. People were like, that is some derangement syndrome shit right there. That's that's what he does. He want, He wants to win. He wants to be at the center. That's who he's been his entire life. And a lot of people love him for that. I'm, I actually think that there'd be a lot of Trump supporters that would listen to this that would be okay with that. Look, I'm just saying you could say that him trying to, that, that January 6th was him trying to like, you know, I think that was a protest and we were all protesting around those times that got way out of control. I don't think in a normal circumstance that that would happen if like the events of 20, like if we are in a thing where he gets a term under his belt and he's out of office, he might do his best. Like he might actually try to get shit done and not try to get reelected. If he gets, you know what I'm saying? Like how every second term president is and just get out there leaving his lasting mark. Look, the guy works on construction. The best part about construction is finishing the job and refining the building. And that is what he wants to do. He wants to get out. He wants to get the job done and then be like, look, here's my Trump stamp on it. Check out those 12 years of events I had effect on. Just like oh. 12 as in first when he first got elected to when his second term ends. Okay. We'll figure out a bet then. We'll figure look, out a bet. We'll figure out a bet. Put, you can clip this if he, the bet will be is I will go mar I will run up on Washington with the lefties to take him out of power because then guess what honestly that would be great I would get a little tyrant little tyrant actions like straight up old school patriot shit taking out tyrants I'd be down and it would be totally socially acceptable I'm in <laughs> like we were doing I, I some rebel shit right. <laughs> yeah like you're you're telling me we got a tyrant like we we got a game boys like let's go <laughs> so like, but y'all do acknowledge that he did like tweet or truth or whatever the fuck that shit is called uh about like his what, what is it so i forget the context but he was saying that uh the the massive fraud allows for the termination of all rules regulations and articles even those found in the constitution he, he did he did say that i mean that's like those aren't even my words that's his okay that is true i mean Honestly, in defeat, a lot of us say crazy shit. 
off the cuff. <laughs> but I mean, you, we've, all, you know, we've all been there, right? Right? You know. But he's like he he was he's he's a he's a ex president of the United States of America running for re-election. Like that type shit is it can be large. Do I think he's going to attempt to change that? I don't think that personally. No, I don't think he's going to try. Do I think it's a possibility? I mean, sure, it's a possibility, but. Is it alarming him say like a, a ex president saying some shit like that? Because it isn't the first time he alluded to it either. Like he's had rallies where he's like, uh, in 2024, 2028. So he kept going like a whole bunch of years. Yeah. Like, eh. He no, said that when, same shit before. So it's like when he was running it up with like the Trump 2028, Trump 2040 in that graphic where it was like the just like the dun 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 dun. Like it was a troll job. Hopefully, if he's really like going, then it's tyrant time. And it's like, oh shit, boys. Second Amendment time, see, they, we got a tyrant. See, this is my problem with Trump support, but she killed me. If that is your political opponent, like have a backbone, dog. If that is your political opponent and they say that in jest or not, you would have an issue with it. You'd be like, that's probably not a responsible thing for a base that isn't very... Yeah. Well, you know, when Biden's talking about blue roofs don't get burned by wildfires, I, okay, people okay. are like, yo, what the like, fuck? This, this is a whataboutism, fam. One, I or P. Lefty is not... A Biden fan. We do not like this guy. I, know, I do I not know. bang for this guy. So when you say, yeah, but when Biden, yes, if he's wrong, let's analyze it. Fuck him. I don't care about Joe Biden, dog. I do not give a shit. Let's get him up out of there. I don't think he's the best candidate. I think he's going to get sick. I have some great news for you because it ain't going to be him. Yeah. Oh, God. It's not, he's going to get sick or something's going to happen. He's not going to be able to run. They're going to throw someone in. It might even be after they elect him. He might run with a new running mate. And it's like, yo, you're really voting for the VP what, because he's he's getting out right after this. Big T, are you saying that Hillary Clinton's going to have him killed? <laughs> no. Who's who's the candidate, Big T? Uh, if they if they do it at the convention, it'll be Gavin Newsom. But I I also kind of like Billy's idea that they'll run Newsom with him because Harris is probably less popular than Biden is. Does she exist anymore? I feel she like I haven't wears, seen. Yeah, she just called for a ceasefire in uh uh in Gaza. Oh, really? I didn't see yeah. that. Mm -hmm. They they saw the poll numbers. They know what it is. So mm. they'll they might replace That's her with Newsom, Democrats, and then though. eighteen months into Biden's term, when he can't do it anymore. Hmm. But if it's Trump against Biden, he's he will lose. Biden? Yeah. You think so? I don't know. I'm excited. It's going to be great. <laughs> if it's Trump against Newsom, I think Newsom would win handily. Can't wait to watch these two guys debate and all They're the theatrics that go along with it. And yes, I'm saying. I, I, this might be the first presidential uh, standoff in history that doesn't have a debate. I got an idea. If they don't, that's such bullshit. Bro, I think I think well, to make I mean, it fair. Welcome to America, buddy. To make it fair, I think we should put Trump against an AI Biden. Like an old school Copus Mentis Biden AI versus Trump, and maybe you know what? If you think that that's unfair, we'll put Prime Trump AI against like Copus Mentis Biden AI, and we'll just let them battle it out like a Madden game before the Super Bowl. I think that's this is, fair. This, is, this was funny as a semi-neutral party because I was, obviously I am of the left, but I'm not a fan of Joe Biden. But what's funny is to hear Biden stands try to convince people that he's coherent. But also hearing Trump stands trying to convince people that he's coherent. These are two incoherent human beings right now. And if they get on a stage live, it is going to be hilarious, dog. Like, like the amount of fuck ups and the amount of like embarrassment for America. Because it's gonna be it's gonna be exactly what America wants, bro. How about, Entertainment. How about this one? How about co presidents? <laughs> let's have them both do it. Okay. Let's let's heal, let's patch this like country the... up. I'm sorry for being a radical centrist. I guess all you guys, the Overton window has shifted on both sides way too far. I'm the only one that cares about the future of the country. Let's have Joe Biden and Donald Trump run the pre presidency and the entire nation as one, as a unified force. Like the meme of the guys at the Olympics who tied and they're like, Can we have two golds? And the guy yeah. goes, it is possible, and they go, yeah, yeah, two goals, yeah. Let's that do just it. It's Crips me. and Bloods working together. Let's make it happen for the future of this country. That would I be actually, so funny. I actually know like a two maintenance dudes that work at this building, and that's literally the dynamic. There's a Sleepy Joe, and then there's like a, a fast paced like New York Donald Trump, and their their dynamic is hilarious because they're like yelling at each other to get stuff done, and like one guy just is in, and it's hilarious, and they're both union, so they just keep their jobs and it would be a great dynamic for this country. How, how is the building 
Are you in that building right now? Uh, no, I'm not in that building right now. Is uh, the building but... still standing? Building are you in? Because I'm like your background is wildly screaming single man, and that's <laughs> not the case. <laughs> like, no, uh, this is an office space. Um, but uh, in that building, stuff gets done, but yep. it doesn't get done the right way. But it works. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So co-presidency. Yeah. And then it always gets blamed on the Biden guy when something goes wrong and he's the perfect fall guy. Yeah. That would be perfect. Anything that happened that was wrong. You could always be like, Oh, that's Trump's fault or, Oh, that's Biden's fault. My guy is doing a great job. Got it done. Has that ever worked anywhere? Um, like co-leaders, co-leaders, um, parenting. Oh yeah. It'll be like the, the parents of the United States will be grandpa and grandpa. <laughs> like gay grandparents. Gay grandpa. <laughs> yeah. It yeah. I'm gay. It's like if Can't anyone wants Grace and Frankie. Yeah, you got like the one hard ass that'll chew you out if you get out of line. You got the other guy that'll be like, come sit on my lap and uh let me tell you what a what a great grandson you are. That's it what sounds the US like is. you and Big Cat. <laughs> and smell ya. Uh yeah, good cop, bad cop. All right, well, I think we just solved the, the future of this country. Great job, guys. Co-presidents. Um, there's something that came out in the news yesterday that I, I feel like I need to address. Um, as an electric car owner myself, there was an article that came out yesterday in the New York Post, a uh, very reputable uh, piece of trash. It says, electric vehicles release more toxic emissions are worse for the environment than gas-powered cars, claims a study. And I thought to myself, have I, have I screwed up? I thought I was saving the world, saving the planet. Now, the real reason why I bought an electric car was because it's just super easy to get around town and you don't have to worry about filling it up with gas, which is true. Um, Send a study? Because from I, my studies that have, because people have claimed that before, but when you look at the carbon footprint across the entirety of the car's lifespan, the yeah. electric is less. I don't think anybody claims that electric... Electric cars don't emit. It's it's the making of them. Yeah, well, it's, well, the it, conflict it's that, minerals. It's that, I mean, that's it, on your but conscious. But this, this this article was specifically. I I did look into it, and it like linked to an op ed piece that linked to a study, but the study was a summary, but it was a detailed summary. So anytime the New York Post publishes something with like a headline that makes you mad one way or the other, you have to go through like five layers of sifting to find out what the actual. Find the, is. find the primary source, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Yeah, and every, it's like with the New York Post especially, and they do this for both sides because what they like to do is just get people mad with headlines and get a shitload of quote tweets from people that, that are like, oh, see, I was right this entire time. So I, I dug through the like different five layers to find out what they're actually talking about here. And the study... May I uh, stop before you continue, my brother, mm -hmm. and say I appreciate you as a fellow citizen, as a fellow fellow human being what you just did is a rare occurrence in today's world it's so it's so hard to do yes. right like it takes time to figure out where this is coming from who's saying yes. it what the study actually was so i looked into the study and um it's not about the uh the carbon emissions it's not about the um emissions that are causing climate change what it is it's a study that shows that um, since electric cars are slightly heavier because they've got the lithium battery in there, so an average electric car weighs like 30% more, I think, than a normal car um, of the same size. So what it's studying is uh, like particles that are emitted from the tires because tires are made from oil, right? They're made from petroleum or whatever that byproduct is. So when you ground, when you grind up tires, it actually emits some pretty bad pollutants into the atmosphere. Um, so it's not a comparison of the CO2 emissions. It's a comparison of, okay, a heavier car that's driven at a pretty aggressive rate will emit you know, the, the ground up tires into the atmosphere at a much higher clip than a, uh, a car that has um, a standard gas powered engine. And when they check the, um, it's about particle emissions. So tailpipes in the last like 30 years have gotten really, really good uh, because we've been trying to clean up all sorts of emissions. 
tailpipes on standard gas cars have gotten to the point where they're not clean, but they're very, very, they're close to being clean. So there's not a lot of particle emissions coming out from a tailpipe of a car, a gas powered engine, um, not to the extent of a heavier electric car that's being driven around. So you're getting a lot of uh, like ground up tire particles that are being released onto like the surface of the earth with an electric car. And the jury is still out on how bad, how much worse that is for the environment than having a, a, a lighter car emitting um, emitting these particles at a, a lighter rate. And it's well, also it's also presupposing that uh, electric cars are going to stay as heavy as they are right now in the future. But right now it's like, yeah, the tire shit that gets put out into the environment, not great. Um, are they are they but saying it's not, it has nothing to do with actual climate change yeah that's what i was, was going to ask it, it doesn't look like just in this little article that i'm reading it doesn't look like it has to do with um greenhouse gases but no. it's just it's more so uh, uh air pollutants that cause uh, health effects mm -hmm. which affect densely populated areas um people that live by freeways stuff like that more more um prone to get asthma stuff like that i, w okay. I wonder so if it there affects is, there spring tires there has been a community notes uh, in the time since I looked this up last night uh, to right now. So there's a community no community notes on it that says, "What is community notes on Twitter? Why that's kind of new? What is that? It's like if you want to rate the validity of a claim or of a tweet or of an article, you okay. can. If you are a subscriber to Twitter Blue, I think, or a subscriber to community notes, you can add in your take on it, and then people vote up or down whether or not your community notes is accurate." So this says, headline is clickbait. The study is about tire wear particulates being worse than tailpipe particulates. Both EVs and gas cars emit these from the tires. EVs are heavier, and the study says when they are driven aggressively and without regenerative braking, it can emit more than a tailpipe. Oh, well, credit to me then, because I, I use regenerative braking on my car. So I just, I most of the time, it's a one-pedal drive, so you take your foot off the gas and then the brake starts to kick in as you take your foot off the gas. Oh, Tesla has that. Yeah. Has so that. if you use I have, that, I have no, I have no brakes anyway. All gas, no brakes. Is this just to like congratulate yourself for all the eco stuff you're doing? <laughs> no, I'm I'm talking about the article because when I saw it, I was like, wait, all the eco stuff. What eco stuff am am I, am I doing? I just want, like the regenerative braking. I, I don't know. I just if didn't want to buy if gas. If you're in the lithium battery space, hit me up. Uh, mm -hmm. Science my DMs. Email me. I might have something you're interested in. Uh, but anyway. Oh, there we go. Especially lithium. Was brides. he setting himself up? For yeah, that? yeah, that exactly. Is. Also, no, no, if, if you also, work Billy, at, at the brides. start at the start of this conversation, you're like, well, we don't have to get into how bad all the conflict lithium is. And now he's like, also, if you're a lithium <laughs> miner, hit me up because I'd like to do business with you. Well, no, it's the graphite. <laughs> it's not the lithium. That's the problem. It's the graphite, which is using a lot of batteries uh, and not in lithium. Lithium ion batteries have uh, graphite, but lithium batteries don't. Um, and graphite is where it gets a little sketchy. That's where there's, you know, children in tunnels, you know, in the middle of the Congo bringing stuff out where all the crazy videos come from when there's collapses. But uh, like that's that's the hard. So if you don't want that, call Billy. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> maybe I'm trying to build sustainable lithium batteries. Um, but hit me up. I need a network. How many uh, jobs do you have? I have a lot of jobs. I'm really trying to just wheel and deal and try to make something of myself. It's America. It's the American dream. Um, but we're, we're out there. Uh, but yeah, no, uh, technology for electric cars is like when they say that the energy is just being exported away from you, like, you know, the, the energy production isn't in the car from the fossil fuels and it's just taken to a, like a fossil fuel plant or the, just the energy grid, there is actually significant decrease in uh, like, it becomes more efficient if it's all wholesale, like electricity production from fossil fuels as opposed to like a uh, small batch energy production, like in a combustion engine in your car. That is true. But the thing is, we need to get to the point with technology to support uh, battery usage. And there's a lot of stuff coming out about using ceramic uh, cells to prevent lithium battery, lithium ion like blow ups. Like you see a lot of these like small uh, e-scooters blowing up and causing fires. 
And a lot of that is just because the battery technology hasn't got there yet. But hopefully one day with innovation, we're able to sustain this large scale consumption of transportation and individual stuff. Like we will get there with like revolutionary technology. We can't be like drawing stuff back. We constantly have to innovate. Like that's, that is going to be how this like earth survives and moves forward and the population can still grow. We can still sustain more people like this whole, like anti innovation and like famine mentality when it comes to resources will be the end of humanity. If we don't just like, like take the Elon Musk route, like of innovation and trying to revolutionize you be talking about, man. It makes sense if you listen, but (laughs) there's two, there's two different ways this world's going. It's either we innovate and we make shit happen for what is all anti? What is, what is anti? Or we just like try to. What is anti innovate? Explain that. Anti innovation. It's like you know we shouldn't try to go to space because it's too cons. It takes. It consumes too many resources. We shouldn't try to do this because like there's two competing ideologies in that we should reduce versus we should reach for the stars. And you know you gotta choose a side. And I'm just trying to convince people that it doesn't have to be like, you know, we need to cut back. We need to cut back. We should do more. We should get going. We should support more people. But how does that, how does that fall in line with our ideology that we need to eliminate 75% of the world's population, Billy? We've agreed that we need to do that. I did not agree to that. <laughs> Who agreed to that? We all did. No, we didn't. We all did. That's, that's the main thing. That's what we're all working at here. That's what Ryan Garcia recently found out. Okay, segue. Okay, segue. He kind of went nuts recently, but who knows what actually happened? Uh, he basically did he, said, or did he just tell the truth? We don't know. He's he's got some pretty strong claims, uh, some Alex Jones ish claims on stuff, and you know he was tweeting a lot of crazy stuff. He told Andrew Tate that he was taken out to the Bohemian Grove and saw some horrific things while he was tied to a tree. Did you, Could have been a listen, bad trip. Did you listen to the audio? That just no, I just up- heard. I just heard the clips. Somebody retweeted it on my timeline. The, the, the audio is wild. He was like, I, I don't give a fuck anymore. I don't care. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say I don't care anymore. They 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 they, they held me down and made me uh, watch babies being raped. I was like, God damn, bro. That's a hell of a thing to say. I mean, who knows, man? I, I heard he got hacked. Did he get hacked? No, no it, was, it, was, it was his voice, bro. It was him? It's, it's him the whole time. It was an audio. It was, it was literally his audio. Well, I, mean, I, I I can't pin his voice out of a lineup, so may, maybe he. But he was in a spaces with who was it? Um, it was a, that was like a prominent space. So there was a lot of oh, uh, Andrew Tate was in there. Yeah, yeah. So and he also thinks there's going to be an earthquake on June six. I don't know. He's been going off. Now that's what I like to see though. From conspiracy people, I want to see predictions because predictions indicate you know what the fuck you're talking about, right? And then. A sane mind when the predictions do not come true, then we can move on from the conspiracy. But I like to see that. Now, now we're talking. That's like that's like putting your money where your mouth is. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I believe what I what I think so much. This is about to happen on so and so date. If it happens, I'm listening. You got my attention. You got my attention. I don't believe it yet, but you got my attention. And this is a UFC guy? No, he's a he's a, a boxer. He recently lost to Gervonta J uh ah, Gervonta Deus? I've so only why, read the name. Why did they take this boxer to Bohemian Grove? Because apparently he was getting uh, initiated from what it sounds. I don't know. He kind of, it may be one of those things where he's, he's, you know, had a mental breakdown. He seems very paranoid and he's kind of going after down the conspiracy rabbit hole. But, you know, I want to give a shout out to Alex Jones, though. Uh, Alex Jones did actually invade the Bohemian Grove at one point. Yeah, like he went there. He he smuggled himself into the Bohemian Grove. So and... Alex Jones went to the Bohemian Grove. Yeah, did he get footage or something? Uh, I think he I think he had maybe like some grainy photos. It's the OG footage. If you go back and look at it, it's the OG owl footage. He got that where like basically something's coming down on a boat and there's a bunch of dudes dressed up in front of a giant wooden owl. And uh, subsequently, people have broken in, and it seems like the area has been abandoned. So either they got found out and moved, because if they were doing something non-nefarious, you know, they probably would keep doing it and be like, hey, look, we're just doing like a little play, like Shakespeare in the park. But it's all shut down now. So who knows what 
he saw. So it was in the, the year 2000, Alex Jones and his cameraman Mike Hansen clandestinely entered Bohemian Grove and shot footage of the cremation of care ceremony. So yeah. Uh, what yeah. the hell does that mean? It's some weird ritual that that rich people do. I don't know. Which, Nixon. Which he even <laughs> cited Nixon's uh, uh, tapes about the Bohemian Grove. I think uh, Ryan Garcia did. But anyway, we, when we had um, uh, Pretty Boy on, I'm blanking right now. Oscar De La Hoya. He told us that oh, Ryan Pretty Garcia boy. is a little. <laughs> Pretty boy. His name was Pretty Boy. That's like no. was his boxer name. Was no. It? Or no, Golden Boy. Golden Boy. Pretty boy. <laughs> Radically different. Golden That's, Boy. I mean, I say, mean say, say what say what you feel, Bill. I, I don't no, wanna... I'm not saying what I feel. I'm a huge fan. Like... I just mixed up my his boxing nickname was Golden Boy, and everyone thought he was too pretty, so I just morphed it. He he knows this, and he's got some of the best hands in history. So. I want no smoke. It was all I feel in like respect. that's on site. If he heard you call him pretty boy though. No, no. He's probably heard that a lot. He took pride in it. He was like, oh, no, it's pretty boy Floyd. Yeah. It's pretty boy Floyd and golden boy. Oscar de La Hoya. I got him mixed up. Yeah. So wait, what were you saying though? Uh, he told us that, you know, they got into a feud and he, you know, Ryan Garcia might be a little off the chain as are a lot of fight sports guys. Like you can't, not be impulsive and you know if you're not a boxer like you have to make split second decisions on violence and acts like that's that's how they make their living it sounds like you may have just like invented something that didn't happen though like the worst possible thing that you can see did what you see, did you see the um the uh the i think he's in the ufc his name's joel joel ba bauman ba bauman he could he calls out, he calls out Jimmy Kimmel. Oh yeah. 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 He goes, he goes, Jimmy Kimmel, viral this until we see the flight logs. Until we see the flight logs. I think you're a pedophile. <laughs> Eat a dick. <laughs> he just walks off and this is a grin. Jimmy Kimmel pretty, didn't go after him. That's pretty wild. That's pretty wild telling somebody who you think is a pedophile to eat a dick. That's kind of mm -hmm. crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, no. But then he only went after Aaron Rodgers. He didn't go after that guy. He only have, went after Aaron Rodgers when he said it. That shit funny, man. Dude, yes, we sir. still haven't seen. They better keep Ghislaine Maxwell alive because she's hopefully she's writing shit. a book. She's... I think she's going to write a book. Is she? I mean, Ooh, she's in prison with all this time. Why would you yeah, buy I that book? I saw a thing that she's writing a memoir to basically think that she's gonna free herself of these shackles like clear her name and be yeah. like here's what really happened and yeah. i wasn't bad how she has no tie to jeffrey epstein's crimes and like she didn't know anything was happening nice cat she better name some names i don't think she will she's had mm. a lot of time to do that well i think she's writing the book book's gonna get out and then it's all out there because if she just starts, you going you gonna buy it? Well, it'll probably get leaked. But don't you think if she named names, that would also make her guilty of knowing that those people were doing something bad, and then also just putting her back at accomplice? I'm just saying, I think it's bullshit that the only woman involved in the sex trafficking case is in jail. None of the men are. Like Billy, what are you trying to like? What are you trying to fucking prove here? Right? <laughs> He's an ally. <laughs> He loves women. He loves women. I'm, I'm sorry just think our society's up. threatened by strong women like yeah. Jane Maxwell. Right. They locked her up. Hey. <laughs> she, she was just a businesswoman. You hmm. can't succeed in America. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. That's an interesting take, Billy. Um, <laughs> I am. I don't think she's going to say shit because she would have said it already to save her own ass. Yeah. Yeah, it's been, it's long, been enough. long enough. Maybe they're building a case. Well, she's had like years All and years time. to prepare her defense didn't she get uh convicted already yeah well maybe the government is building a case with her against several people okay sure yeah uh, from the inside in solitary like Clemmer. <laughs> dude that is fucked up they turned it off so i i'm not a lawyer i'm studying for the bar exam but are we kidnapping chris Clemmer right now 
That was my take. I said is that this, before. He's he now being, being held under false pretenses. Is he being kidnapped? He's not being held. He can walk out. He can walk out, but yeah, he can. That's fair. But technically, he, he doesn't time. know it's off, so it's false pretenses that he's being held. Well, he's holding himself. Under, Again, he's not I, being held. I think he's kidnapping himself right now. I think if... Can y'all fill, yeah. fill me in? I don't know who Chris Klimmer is. Sure, sure. So Klimmer is... He works here at Barstool. He uh, works at the New York office. He was a producer on the Kirk Minahan show. And now he um, he just kind of does a lot of different stuff around New York. He gives like New York facts. He did like a rat race thing in New York. And he's just a very unique guy. And uh, he did the, the combine against Mincy last yeah. Friday. And he was yeah. also a participant in our combine. Um, and so he decided to do solitary confinement for a week on a live stream. So 100 hours of solitary. Locked himself in a room. He's got a bed. He didn't have a pillow. For some reason, he didn't give himself a pillow. And he did like a tutorial of how to make your own pillow. And he just took two sweatshirts and just like put them on top of each other. And he's like, now you can see I've constructed my own pillow. He's like Martha Stewart. If, if Martha Stewart was locked up and if she got put in the hole when she was in jail. So he's, um, he's been doing this for the last, what, two and a half days. But about a day ago, he decided that he was just going to start sleeping the entire time on the stream. So he's been sleeping for like probably 15 out of the last 17 hours. And, uh, Dave was like, this is so boring. I can't watch this guy sleep anymore. We're going to cut the stream. and But he's going to stay in there until he's out. He's not going to know that the stream's been cut until he emerges from solitary. That's on fucked Friday, up. On Friday. So he's going to come out on Friday, and they're going to film him as he gets out of solitary. So uh, it was Klimmer's idea to go into solitary confinement on his own, and he wanted to do it. But now it's like, okay, well, Klimmer is going to be, is he going to be heated when he gets out? Is he going to be dejected? I, I don't know what, I don't know what his reaction is going to be. Dude, I don't think anyone's in the mental headspace to handle anything at, at getting out of a hundred hours of solitary confinement. I mean, think about this. If he knew he wasn't on camera right now and it was being live streamed, he'd walk out, meaning he's being held under false pretenses. But he's also holding himself under false pretenses. No, but nah, his he pretenses committed, he committed. are that he's being filmed. But he he committed to going, what unless he said it. Unless he specifically said, "I'm not doing this unless it's getting filmed," then it's it's of his own doing. Yeah, because he he is like under his own power. He could walk out of that room at any time. But he doesn't know. I mean, Aaron, it's it's Aaron, an interesting idea. Muted. It's an interesting idea. I think someone could argue that with much better logic and reasoning skills. Was it Dave that cut the stream? Dave Porno cut the stream. Yeah, Dave decided to cut the stream. Why? That's like a hockey fucked up. So I think no no one was watching it really. Although it did say on Twitter that it was getting like two hundred seventy seven. Yeah, wait, 000 what was views. that? I think that was cumulative views. Yeah, total. Uh, oh, but it was okay. displayed in a way that made you think it was like two hundred seventy seven thousand people were watching him sleep. Well, yeah. What's the what's the benefit of cutting it though? Like that's like to me like extremely inhumane because th- like we're not you're not gonna lose anything if you just keep it going right. I think his justification was on it was on the main channels. And so the main channels, the main feeds were getting abnormally low amounts of views. Why not just put it on a smaller channel? Because it's yeah. just because him, like going through, I don't know if you ever like studied like solitaire before or just looked into it or study, but like it causes like extreme like mental issues. Yeah. Like you can go into like a lot of different places, man. And I think supporting that would be the bad thing it's dumb doing it in the first place but i think supporting that is probably the best course of action cutting the stream where you think you get you know what i'm saying so now, you, now you're doing it kind of like in vain yeah I, I i don't know i don't know uh how he's going to react to it when he gets out but i i'll admit i watched a good amount of it because uh, i'm fascinated with glimmer but, you know, it is going to make it get more views and all this content to get more stuff, which is very, very hard to wrap your head around when you're trying to accomplish something. And I don't think I, if I was him, I wouldn't be able to get my head around it. That that mental gymnastics you have to do like, oh, this was really bad. But at the same time, it's really good. It's really hard. Yeah. When he gets out, that video is going to do numbers for sure. Wild. Okay, but, uh, but the, this this was Klimmer came with this idea and he pitched it and he said, "I want to go into solitary confinement for a week." 
Now you could say like the circumstances changed because it's no longer in a live stream. Um, but I don't, I think he's kidnapping himself. I think technically he could file charges against himself for kidnapping him. Well, I don't I, think we got anything to do with it. I'm not going to be the one to say it, but yes, you are say it. He, he, he could sue. There is a chance. I mean, I don't know if he signed a waiver before he went in. How can he sue? Under what grounds? That he was being held under false pretenses. Pre so, 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 unless, unless he, it would be a dumb lawsuit because he's going to waste a lot of money. Unless he specifically said, I'm not doing this unless it's live streamed, he has no case. Or unless under his own will. He would have to try to leave and then Vibs would have to be like, he, sorry, you're not, you're not walking out the store. Yeah. If he tries no, to leave no and Vibs won't let him, then yeah, then that would be like false imprisonment. Yeah, that'd be a kidnapping. Yeah. Okay. I also think like in your contract, like you sign a waiver you for do. everything. Yeah. Probably. You do. Um, in lighter news, <laughs> big big T, can I can I discuss something of vaguely surrounding your personal life that you brought up to us earlier? Uh oh. Uh what? Oh <gasps> yeah. Oh uh, well, you know what, Billy? No, I'm trying to remind him. What is it? That you might get bark, a dog. Bark. Yeah, well, I mean, it hasn't happened yet. But it's a very cute dog, and I hope you get it's it. It's the cutest dog in the whole world. And what kind of dog is it? It's a chihuahua. It's such a good combination. You gonna get a chihuahua? I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, my parents have one. They're the best dogs. Also, I, just, I mean, I, I live picture in picture you with a chihuahua dog. I live in a small apartment. Like, I can't have a huge dog. I'm gonna, I have to say... Large lazy dogs are better in small apartments than small high energy dogs. Bro, he's just, he's excited about getting a dog, and here you go with these facts. Nobody asked for like, what are you talking about? I know, about? but well, Big T, just tell us about your dog. You're excited about it. Well, like, it's not my dog yet. Say, Billy's give like, it give it two weeks, and then we'll we'll discuss. Billy's like, this is actually very inhumane. It's like <laughs> you're in this case, you're Dave, and uh, your dog is Chris Klimmer. <laughs> not Arian. Uh, so I hope you get the dog just because. Me too. It'd be such a it'd be such a fun visual. Yeah. You taking that thing for a walk. You probably need like dental floss to walk it so small. It's like a baby <laughs> right. chihuahua. And I I know you're thinking of a name. I I would like to have Oh, our let's kick it around. I would like to have our listeners contribute to some just kicking around some names for you. Uh they're more than welcome to do that. It will not be considered. Okay. I'll well if consider. it's a good one. Do you have do you have a name yet? Uh potentially. But it's I mean, not what, my dog is, yet. Is, so, I mean, you got. I mean, there are people who who don't have babies that that have baby names picked out. Yeah, but a dog name like has to be more suited. This might be a hot take. This might be a hot take. Okay, give it to me. A dog name is more dependent upon meeting the individual than a baby name is. Facts. I agree. Like people pick a baby name before they've ever seen the baby. They're like this, whatever it looks like, that's what it is. Well, a lot I know of times people will be like, it's a family name. Yeah. So people, sure. Yeah, that's like true. Yeah, that, well, I know people who pick out baby names before they even was with the people that was having babies with. Yeah, yeah no, that's, uh, that's to my point. But yeah, I, think, I, think, you I, think, I think you're correct. Yeah. You can't just have a, a, a shoehorn name for a dog yeah. and without seeing it. I had like nine names, nine finalist names before I met Blake. And I was like, I I don't want to name him before I meet him because I want to see the dog's vibe. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. He's always I wish I had what y'all had. I do. I, I do envy that feeling. I do. It could what be I, yours. What am I? I don't want a Chihuahua. No, I'm uh, saying the feeling could be yours. No, I just don't feel for dogs like that. Like I, I said, I wish I had the feeling. Like I don't have. Like I don't have it. Like I'm not an asshole. Happiness I just is don't a choice, have, Arian. It's not a choice. I just don't feel for dogs. Like. When you look at squirrels, that's how I feel when I look at dogs. I is love squirrels. What it, but you're not going to have one and name one and like name him Joey and take him around on dental floss. You know what I'm saying? Oh, it's not one gonna, time, not gonna one happen. time uh, we did have a squirrel at school. That's what's up, Billy, but that's not my point. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, my point. My point is I don't have that feeling. I wish I do. I envy that feeling. One of my favorite people uh, is John Stewart. John Stewart's dope to me. His last, one of his last posts, um, he was, I'm talking about a man in tears. He had a three legged dog that he's had since the Saw beginning that. of the John Stewart show or the daily show. And he was just like, he lost a human. Like, and I, I felt for that side of it, you know, so I feel for you losing a companion that, you know, so that kind of, 
changed my mind a little bit as far as like people feeling for their pets. I still mm -hmm. don't feel that though. Like I do envy that feeling. I don't have that feeling. You want to hear something wild? Yeah, man. Neanderthals never domesticated dogs and dogs may have been our advantage in defeating Neanderthals in the great European great Neanderthal human war. That's fascinating. Isn't that crazy? So like when they're alerting to people, when they're alert, like you're sitting around the fire, you're hitting the hay, you know, it's cold out, you know, you got, you got your buddy, you got your dog and you're sleeping suddenly, uh, nocturnal Neanderthals sneak up on your village. Guess who alerts you to it? Dogs, bro. That's a good theory. I like that. It's not a theory. I mean, that's probably what happened. That's a theory. That's the definition of a theory. Well, well we really. domestic dog, we know dogs. You, just, you just said it's not a theory. It's probably what happened. <laughs> that's just well, you can, you can, it's a theory. Use logic and reason. Dogs yes, alert. That's a theory. You're describing a theory perfectly. <laughs> Okay, it is a theory. Yeah. But I like to think of it as fact. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> um, colloquially. Right, well, pick, pick theory is used colloquially. This. Me too. I really do. And we will have we'll have some listener submissions for what the name should be. And I may or may not choose to call it by a different name. <laughs> Go for it. Based on what they say. I got a homie who had a baby and I call her a different name. <laughs> is it like a nickname or like just totally different? No, it's totally different. Like her name is Phoenix and I call her Harlem because they were like searching for baby names and she's just the cutest fucking baby. And I don't think I've listened, but you, I rated babies on Twitter before. I think babies are ugly. She is just the cutest little fucking thing ever. And uh, they named her Phoenix and um, I just refused because I, they came for me for a name. I thought I had it. You know what I'm saying? I thought I had it and they didn't like it. And I was like, well, I'll, that's what I'm calling her because that name is Fire. So I call her Harlem. <laughs> That is a cool name. It is fire, isn't it? Dope ass name, Harlem. There's one other thing I want to talk about uh, before we get into fluoride, all that stuff. It's uh, it's a controversial take on something that was in the news this week. So Arch Manning has decided not to be included in the new NCAA college football game from EA Sports, and I would just want to read an anonymous person's opinion on Arch Manning not being included. Wait, before we do, do we have his statement on as to why? Uh, his statement was he wants to focus on football. He okay. wants to focus on being a football player. So he couldn't fill out the, the PDF. So uh, this anonymous person <laughs> said, I can't stress enough what a massive miscalculation this is on the part of Arch Manning and presumably the rest of his family. Who do you think said that, Arian? Uh, you cut out as soon as you said massive. I heard nothing after massive. I can't stress enough what a massive miscalculation this is on the part of Arch Manning and presumably the rest of his family. Sounds like someone who knows ball. Massive miscalculation. Was this Skip Bayless? No, it was Big T. Close. <laughs> that was close. I'll take that. I'd, I'd love to be <laughs> Skip Bayless, dude. A massive why miscalculation. Why you feel, why you feel that, Big T? So you're you're the backup quarterback at Texas. You're barring an injury, you are not going to play this season. And instead of taking the $600 and putting yourself in a video game that everyone loves, you're going out of your way to make yourself a, a negative storyline saying that you want to focus on football so you can't like sign your name on something. And so, and it's not like there's a better deal to be it's not like he's foregoing the $600 and he's going to go be in a different video game for 50 grand. He's getting nothing. So you're what, what were you going to say? I was going to say, I was a counterpoint. I, I hear your grievances. I don't necessarily disagree with it. Right. It's probably be easier writing or filling out the PDF than it would making a statement on it. Right. But I don't know if you remember back. No, you don't. Cause you weren't born, but PFT remember this. All those NBA games in the in the nineties, they never had Jordan in it. None of the two K games for a while had Jordan in it. It develops this prestige, like Denzel Washington. You don't ever see him in the news, and you know what I'm saying? He has this prestige about him. So maybe it's a calculated move to try to develop this anonymity that builds your prestige because 
you know, when you kind of out of sight, it kind of builds the allure of who of your of your uh, prowess. Well, then there was there was another report today that said he doesn't want to be in it until he's quote the guy at Texas, which seems kind of like like if I was a teammate of that guy, I'd be like, dude, what the fuck are you? So like, just put yourself in the video game. It's not that serious. So. I'd- I think, two guys. I think that's what like, it is you, now. I think that's what it is. There's two guys you, out there. You want to wait until you're until it's all about you. When I hear about this, I, I, I think of two people. One is Michael Jordan. He was never in any of those games. The other, Barry Bonds. He wasn't in the MLB games. Arch Manning is not Michael Jordan I know, or Barry Bonds. I know, but I'm, I'm just saying, like, I don't know if you can say it's a massive miscalculation if the two examples that you can point to ended up being just fine. The other two were the best in their sport, yep. playing professionally, making a ton of money. There's a difference, but I'm saying... And it's... they could negotiate a different... Like, they felt that they weren't being paid what they were worth by EA or whoever was making those games. And they, the company making the game didn't want to pay them that, and they said, fine, we won't do it. Uh, this, there, there's no, like, negotiation here. It's either you get $600 and be in it, or you don't, or you get nothing. Isn't it kind of sus, though, to let other men play with you? Like, play with your body? Sure. <laughs> and make you do shit? It's like, I don't want another man controlling my legs. <laughs> sure. Like, I think, but like, also, 90% of the scholarship FBS players are, are letting other men do that. Yeah, so. that's that's Biden's America. You know what? This is what this is what masculinity is now in America. Could be. You know what? Ninety nine point nine percent of even our best athletes are just like, yeah, daddy, do whatever you want with my body at home. Uh, I'm being a hundred percent dead serious right now. Biden should put out a tweet when the game comes out, being like, "Thank you, Joe, like for bringing this back." That would be the biggest feather in his cap right now. Yeah. Is that NCAA football came back on his watch? <laughs> he brought it back. So when it, when it comes to like looking at the whole video game, my take is like, I don't really care. Like, uh, well, th- that's the other thing. People who play this game don't care. Nobody's dying to play with Arch Manning. No, I, they are. No, they are not. I don't know if people. There's so many dudes who are gonna. So this is what I think kind of has to do with it. So many dudes are gonna start Arch like when they're starting Johnny Manziel on the Browns, and Arch's like stats aren't gonna be that good. And I think that's also part of it. Like they're gonna see what they rate him, and I don't think it's gonna be that good. Also, I think it's kind of out of respect for Quinn Ewers because, like, you're going to see so much Arch EA content if he's put in the game about how bad he is or how, like, he should be starting because of his stats. And it's just controversy he wants to avoid. The guy's been under the spotlight. He doesn't want it anymore. I think Billy might be onto something. I think that he put himself in the spotlight by doing this. No, but I wait. I think that if he's been in the spotlight, no matter what, trying to be a good teammate, he knows. Well, he might not know this, but I think that most people that would play the game if Arch was in it and you're playing with Texas, are you going to start Quinn Ewers for the entire... No, you're going to you're gonna fucking play Arch Manning, right? And so he doesn't want all this Arch Manning content coming out, being like, Arch just won an NCAA championship. And then Quinn Ewers, who's the actual real starter on the football team, pretty good quarterback, has to deal with all these people being like, yo, Arch is better because I won a natty with him in my video game. That's the whole thing, though. People don't play with Texas. The, like, people play with UAB and Old Dominion, and then you I do think a they franchise would, where no, the real players do. are out of the game in two years anyway. They would play with, with Texas if Arch Manning was the quarterback, though. People, uh, people like, for, for like, the deep cuts guys play with UAB and other schools, but, like, there's a huge consumer base of Longhorns fans who will play with the Longhorns. There's young kids who like aren't like the that people who, in the weeds. The people who like really love the game like aren't getting on. I'm sure there are. Yes, there are people who will play with Texas, but the number one mode in the game is franchise. That's what the whole game is built around. That and Road to Glory, and people love taking. To, like if you start a I franchise with Texas, not about that part, bro, where you get recruited out of high school and shit. Yeah. Hey, yo, that kind of got me. I'm going to play that bitch. Yeah, no, franchise and Road to Glory are the two, like, good modes in the game. And when you start a franchise, why would you start it with, like, number three, Texas? That's not fun. People do it with tiny, shitty schools and then take them to national championships. That's the whole fun of the game. But I, yeah, I but do, that's a very small minority. It is not. You are you are wrong. I think a lot of casuals <laughs> do sit down and they want to play with Texas. Like, if you're a Texas fan, you want to play with Texas. That's what I'm going to say, casuals. There are so many more casuals than you expect. Like everyone you know who many, has like lamented the loss of this game and wanted to play it is on my side. Every 12 year old or nine year old who just wants to buy a football game, who is the mass consumer base. Is no, nine or 12 year old can. Cause they're all broke. 
fact. Did your parents buy it for them? No, I'm just joking, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nine year old nine year olds don't know who Arch Manning is. So, so it my, yes, matter. they do, dude. My take on this. Go I, find me one. I, Go I, find me a nine year old who knows who Arch Manning oh, is. I'll give you a hundred dollars. Nine year olds in Texas definitely know Arch Manning. They know their hey, their starting quarterback yeah, on their high school. Not that team. Billy knows. Arian, does do you think your son knows who Arch Manning is? Nah. Okay. <laughs> uh, my take. I said this on part of my take yesterday, but I think um, what they should do is they should allow you. Don't do the thing where you're like, oh, if you try to create a player whose name is Arch Manning and you give him the attributes, don't try to like take that name out of the system. Let, uh, there, you're not going to be allowed. To. Let people. I've already said that. Really, let yeah. people create their own Arch Mannings, and then we'll have a to. competition to see like whose Arch Manning is better. If you could do that, they wouldn't be allowed to make the game. I think people who know who Arch Manning is are fans of football in general. But like, so like when I was in, when I was in college, there were people who knew the third string, whatever. Right. But that's a very small minority of the actual Tennessee fans. Right. Like there are people like that, the blogs, like them, they know who's coming in the pipeline, who were recruiting, like all that type of stuff. But like, so like there are people who know who Arch Manning is, but I don't think, I, th I think Big T's correct here. Uh, there are people who would play with it, but like the majority of the consumer base of the NCAA football won't really give a shit if he's in there or not. I'm just, yeah, I'm just saying, like, it would suck. That's just my opinion. Manning. I don't know. If EA needed what him it? in the game that badly, they would have. It would. Sure he it was would in it. suck coming in as a freshman you, and getting all about? the shit. I mean, no, but like, you look, your daddy. Yo, daddy's a goat. Yo, Wait, are you saying it would like, suck being Arch about? Manning? With dealing about? dealing with the fanfare. Man, fuck that Making shit, bro. Making $10 million dollars to play college football and like being the man is that much from is, the How much is NIL is? Uh, it's rumored. Rumored? That He's boy got, millions, yeah. Boy, we got Kate because his last name. Plus, yo, yo, people are like on, like forever. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's like, that. that is the best. He has, he's lived one of the best lives you can as a human being, dog. What? Yeah, he's he's having a pretty good time. He's not he's not starting. He's getting paid millions of dollars, living in Austin, going to the University of Texas. Great probably life. a lot of, probably a lot of ladies around town that are interested in the Arch Manning. Or guys we don't even want to judge. Yeah, a lot of a lot of people around town that want to be his in pick of the litter in, in the Arch Manning business. Uh, <laughs> he's he's having an enjoyable college experience well, right now. Okay, think about this. Think about Johnny Manziel's career as like from a young age. You know, a lot of attention and then not panning out and it completely and they're two different people, but there is that factor you need to consider because there is the, you know, the slippery slope in the edge that could be the difference between, you know, another Manning franchise quarterback successful career and absolutely downsliding. Oh, there's so, a lot of pressure on him for sure. Yeah, I agree but, with and that. Money and money and, you know, all that isn't going to solve the problem of, oh shit, I'm not playing well in like the, the snowball effect of all that. Like I, that's what I feel bad for him about because yeah, nothing's going to solve money that. Money ain't going to solve the problem of Plus, I It's not like he grew up with money. So it's not like it changes. It's going to change his life in any way. He's just going to deal with the same problems. And you know, he's not touching that money because he's got financial advisors. So he's just sitting in a dorm room dealing with everything. And oh, you mean his millions right. are collecting interest? <laughs> it's really hard selling the story of what woe is the what was the million. Woe right? is, but like you I, are. I, yes, I you wish are. The best. you are. I am. Also, the difference between him and Johnny Manziel is that Johnny Manziel didn't come from one of the most prolific football families of all time. Of all time. And not yeah, only are, that, like that's more pressure. I didn't even know what Johnny Manziel. Manziel. No one's, no hey, one's saying that. What are you talking about? He won the Heisman. What no one's saying that there no one's saying that there's no pressure on arch man there's definitely there's a lot of pressure on arch and like it's not easy to handle for a, a 19 20 year old for sure but also the uh there are harder problems there are much harder problems and but he has he he's has doing okay he's having a good best, time he probably has the best support system for that mm -hmm. ever of any athlete in the history of sports maybe <laughs> okay and like media training <laughs> like yeah. everything like bro i know how to be the top i know how to be the lowest all i gotta right. call uncle pops and we are on like <laughs> that support system is crazy dog yeah he's got two two great probably the one athlete with the best unks to leave on 
lean on. He also, <laughs> for the first for the first two years of his collegiate career, doesn't even there is no pressure. He doesn't have to do anything. Yeah, I think the pressure is more on Quinn Ewers as a starter in front of yeah, him. Yeah, absolutely. I would for argue sure. that. Yeah, because so there, if there's one thing college football fans love more than anything, it's a backup quarterback, dog. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Who do you think? Like, if what are the differences in situations where? Arch would call Eli for advice first when he calls Peyton for advice. Do you think Ooh, he hits, does he hit so messy now? Like he hits Eli up all the time for the small stuff? No, he hits up Eli to like help him with issues like yo, I'm in jail. Like bail me D- out. Don't tell Peyton. Yeah. Peyton Peyton doesn't fly with that shit. Eli got a lot like from what I've heard, Eli partied harder than Peyton. I Eli think that was if, in jail. No, if, he wasn't uh, in jail, but he's just like he's a little more chill, like, oh dude, I got you. If if he's in trouble with like the local cops, if he uh, loses another student ID at a place he shouldn't be, he'll call Eli, make that happen. And but if he needs the help of like a senator, then he calls Peyton. <laughs> what does he go to his actual dad for? Yeah. Oh, Cooper. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> yeah, probably he probably parties with Cooper. Cooper seems like the the wild one of the bunch. Yeah. So I think I think Arch is the one. Uh, he's under some pressure, but. Uh, Quinn is under more pressure than Arch because it's like one fuck up and you know that you've got a Manning behind you. But yeah, I, I kind of see where Billy's coming from where it's like, Yikes. it's not it's not the prototypical college experience. There's a lot more pressure on him uh, and expectation than there would be on a normal 20-year-old. Yeah, it's infinitely better. But it's better. It's better <laughs> overall, agree, yeah. It's like, I'd it's still so much rather good. be Arch Manning than being a kid that's taking out student loans and like the first in your family to attend college and you're studying like computer science. I thought okay. I was I thought I was like extremely privileged because I had uh gotten a hold of like Jamal Lewis and he told me how to do things. You know what I'm saying? That's <laughs> way better situation though. Yeah. You know, Admit that it is a pro- there is a problem that could pose. Yeah. It's not the, a non issue. The world is at his fingertips. There's a problem with any college student. True. It's not only a non-issue, it's a positive. You are describing awesome things. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) That he was the number one recruit in the country, been the coolest kid in his whole life. Like, every school he went to, he was the coolest kid. Made millions of dollars to go play college football. Hasn't even had to do anything yet, so people still, like... We don't know if he's good or not. He might be bad, and everybody still thinks he's awesome. Will presumably play well enough to go make millions of more dollars in the NFL. It is a bizarre no, situation no that he's found himself in, though, where he's like, as a how old is he? Is he nineteen or twenty? I would assume probably nineteen, going into his sophomore year. Okay, so if he's nineteen, he's uh, he's eighteen. Eighteen, really? So very few eighteen-year-olds are able to make grown men upset because they can't play with you in a video game. That's like because he didn't sign his name on a piece of paper. People all over the world have opinions about him on that. That's that's a unique pressurized situation that I think most people would rather not have to go through. But again, the good by far outweighs the bad with his situation by far. Uh, All right, Billy, you got anything else on the sheet before we dive into fluoride? Did you see the guy who invented uh, drinking with your girlfriend? Yes, I did see that. Yeah. (laughs) Dude, wine a bottle night, right? right? Yeah. What, what, what are we talking? What are we talking about? I think I sent. I I emailed the tweet. He uh he tweeted. Yeah. Hang on, I'll find it. Him and his girlfriend do this thing where they turn their phones off, turn off the TV, and each have a bottle of wine and just talk until the bottle of wine is finished. He tweeted uh, a picture. I of, thought it was cute. A picture of him and his girlfriend. Do you know what a bottle night is? Probably not, because my girlfriend and I invented it during a 2023 <laughs> blizzard in Buffalo, New York. We lock our phones away, turn the TV off, each grab a bottle of wine and talk. That's it. We simply talk and enjoy each other's presence. And uh, so, yeah, he invented hanging out with your girlfriend. <laughs> Isn't that I a thought date? That was sweet. He invented drinking in Buffalo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you know what him. the? I've I haven't seen anybody discuss. Do you know what the reply? He replied to his own tweet. On the other 30 nights of the month, I grind to build my business. Oh, good, yeah, I did good. See I've that. grown my startup from nothing to $518,000 in annual revenue. Every Tuesday, I share tips and strategies for entrepreneurs in my newsletter. 450 plus people subscribe. Sweet. I think one of his tips is uh, getting engagement. This bitch has 36 million views. 
Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, exactly. This might be controversial. Um, I like Bottle Night. Bottle Night's a good idea. I do, too. I like Bottle Night. And everyone was making fun of me. Like, have you ever heard of a bag night? Like, do, do, do. Bag I think night? it's fun. <laughs> bag night? Yeah, well, I've, nobody's... Been, I've been having Bottle Night for a good six, seven years, man. Yeah, I think nobody's that's why disagreeing. Viral, everyone relates. Yeah, nobody's disagreeing with the fact that, like, it's nice to spend quality time with your girlfriend. They're, they're, he got all that engagement for saying he invented it. Yeah. So I, I developed uh, I developed this thing uh, okay. um, like six months ago, uh, maybe a little bit longer than that, maybe like seven or eight months ago, uh, where Blake, Blake and I, we ground ourselves. So it's important for any living being to make contact with the ground and to practice <laughs> ambulation and to ingest oxygen into our lungs together at the same time and practice a grouping ritual where we uh, define areas of commonality in our lives, which is in about a four or five block circumference surrounding my house. And we do that together as a unit. And I find that it bonds you with whatever creature you happen to be engaging this activity with. So we do that three times a day, first thing in the morning, last thing at night before we go to bed. And it's a great ritual. And I think more people could probably use some practice in it and it would develop a close relationship between you and your dog. But with us, it's, it's cohabitating in the same space and expanding our location around our domicile. So I feel like it's uh, been very impactful in our lives together. And it's, you might know it as going for a walk with your dog, but uh, when you describe it in this way, it sounds a lot cooler and a lot more awesome. And that's what they're doing right now with bottle night. So everyone does bottle night. It's a great idea. Uh, but say, but laying claim to the fact that you invented it is pretty strange. In 2023. In 2020. Buffalo, New York. But grounding would mean you were barefoot. Occasionally. In our backyard. We're, we're sometimes both grounded. Oh. I think bottle night's a nice idea. And then I then when we get back, I give him nutrients. And his body grows from the nutrients that I, <laughs> that I put into his area that he knows to be the place where he receives nutrients his dish and i feed him and he loves me um yeah bottle night i'm all in on, on bottle night good more people need to drink yeah mm -hmm. uh, do they yeah <laughs> yes yeah i agree mm -hmm. uh, and he also someone said why don't you put it why don't you put it in a glass he said that's not the like that's against the rules of bottle night <laughs> i like that yeah it is bottle night. It's bottle not night. Not glass night. It's not wine night. Just sip it. Wine Oof. night's already a thing. Let's just bottle make it 40 night. night. Edward 40 hands. Edward 40 hands <laughs> night. <laughs> Edward Blackout. 40 hands. With their sidewalk, slammer, sidewalk slammer night. <laughs> oh, I like that. That just ends in a domestic violence call. <laughs> joke. Yeah. Uh, that's a joke about sidewalk slammers. So... um Billy just sent a meme to the to the group chat. I think it's time for us to discuss fluoride. What do you guys think? All right, let's talk about fluoride. Fluoridization. It sounds weird. It sounds like you're saying like it's a bunch of swamp water. Like this is DeSantis water. The fluoridization of water and uh, the controversies and benefits surrounding it. So um, you guys, we, we I think we all have fluoride in our water, right? I think most we all live in cities. Do, most. Let me see fluoride by state. There are a I couple like cities and Edmund smaller towns that yeah. have recently uh, reversed the uh, the adding of fluoride to water. I think Canada's had a couple towns too that have walked it back in the last like ten years or so. Oh, so the top states are Kentucky is ninety nine percent fluoride, Minnesota ninety eight, Illinois ninety eight. In the bottom states are Hawaii, which has almost no fluoride, New Jersey, which has sixteen percent, Oregon. Idaho and Montana and Louisiana. So I would love to see an IQ graph next to those <laughs> states to see who has the highest, if it's core, if there's any correlation. I think that, that I think uh, Portland is a city that doesn't have it. So shit, then maybe it's good. Well, yeah. I mean, we're so we're let, let's just look good. at the study. <laughs> I caught that big too. We can get, to, we can get to the study in a little bit, Billy, because that's definitely a part of it, but like a little bit of background on fluoride and water. Um, fluoride has been put into our water supplies since like the 1940s, 40s. 1945. Grand Rapids, Michigan was uh, the first city or municipality to do it. 
And they did it because they saw that there were certain, so fluoride occurs naturally in a lot of water, depending on where you're getting your water from, um, the rocks that it runs through, sometimes they pick up naturally occurring fluoride. And the cities that had uh, a higher concentration of fluoride in their water showed demonstrably lower uh, teeth damaging effects. Or I guess like they had, they had better dental health overall, uh, fewer calories, things like that. And they did a study and they found out that, okay, fluoride could help protect your teeth from cavities, from uh, tooth decay. And so Grand Rapids was the first to try it out and it was a big, big success. And it kind of spread all over Michigan at the start of it. And more and more towns were putting it in their water and there was fewer and fewer instances, especially in like, uh, like younger, the younger population, like under 20 tooth decay, things like that. And they touted it as being this this massive success. And so it kind of spread on from there. What were you going to say, Billy? This sounds like it's being written by fluoride propagandists. No, this is the background of why there's fluoride in water. All right. Why, why do you think that we started putting fluoride in water? Well, probably in water that needs, that has zero fluoride. But there is like naturally occurring fluoride in a lot of water now has too much fluoride. I mean, when it comes to, there's something called uh, dental fluorosis and mm -hmm. it's happening to like, you see a lot of kids um, who like have teeth with like white, white coloring or sort of yellowish white coloring on top of their teeth. And it's basically like because of excess fluoride. Yeah. So that, that does happen. I don't think that it's a lot of people. It's like a very small minority of people that have the dental fluorosis. And there are some communities in Colorado where they have naturally occurring fluoride um, that's at a much higher level where you get like those yellow or brown spots in your teeth from having too much fluoride for sure. But I'm just saying like the reason why we started doing it in the United States was because we saw some areas that had naturally occurring fluoride at um, higher at, at like significant, not like over the top levels that were doing um, a lot of good things for people's teeth. And so that's why we started doing it in Michigan. That's the background of it. 23% of the total population is affected by dental fluorosis. Has 23% of the affected population has brown stains on the teeth from fluoride? Yep. Where are you seeing this? It's online. Dental fluorosis, National Institute of Health. Okay. Dental fluorosis. There's moderate well, to severe always, fluorosis. You can't always trust them. White or brown speckles on your teeth, overexposure to fluoride in the early years of life when your permanent teeth are developing. Let's see what the uh, Cleveland Clinic has to say about that. How common? It's about one in every four Americans between the ages of mild fluorosis. Okay. Moderate to, to severe fluorosis is far less common in the U.S. So, yeah, you, you might have like slight discolorations, but um, mild fluorosis. I think what you were talking about was having like yellow or brown stains on your teeth that are visible and notable, right? Yes. Well, fluorosis, I mean, everybody has, I, I think I probably have it right now. I think we all sort of have some level of it. Yeah. So, so. if you, if you look at mild fluorosis, it just looks, it, it's pretty much normal teeth. And then once you get to moderate to severe fluorosis, that's when you see the, the like yellow and brown stains. So I, that's not 25%. But I'm just saying, I'm trying to give a little bit of context to why we put fluoride in water. And it was to help prevent tooth decay. That's why it started in the 1940s. Can we agree on that, Billy? Yes. Okay. So in the 1940s. Oh, shit. I thought he was going to say no. I ain't going to lie. We started well, doing that. someone's been drinking a lot of fluoride water. And then uh, the John Probably Birch Society. Fluoride in general. The John Birch Society in the 50s and 60s started to put out. Uh, propaganda saying that it was a putting fluoride in, in drinking water was a communist plot to overthrow the United States. Like the Russians were behind it essentially. Yeah. Let's fucking go. That's yeah. the same society that I think killed Kennedy and MLK. That I was talking about the other day. The John Lyndon B. Johnson. Yeah. Lyndon B. Johnson's a part of it. Uh, the, the original owner of the chief's father was a part of it. The oil tycoon Lamar hunt that, that, that we got to look into that. We should do a whole episode on the John Birch society. We, we could, yeah. So the John Birch Society was a conservative anti-communist um, advocacy group that is like right-wing libertarian. They still so, around? So, yeah, you, you, would, you would love these guys, Big T. Uh, was 
LBJ was in the John Birch Society? I didn't know. Yeah, that. dude. That's that's where it gets sketchy. I mean, you gotta look into some stuff. They might be the ones in front of the wooden owl. So they were um they they were proponents of the fluoridization of water uh is a plot to increase communism in the United States theory back in like the nineteen fifties. And uh gradually the policy of putting fluoride in water spread almost everywhere in the United States. There's every state has big cities and most big cities have fluoride in their drinking water. So uh, right now, 72% of the U S population that drink from community water systems have some fluoride in their water. Uh, about 209 million people. So yeah, Billy's right. The, uh, the lowest or Hawaii that's 8.5% in Hawaii have fluoride in their water new jersey 16.1 oregon 26.4 and montana has 31.4 percent um and washington dc has the highest they have 100 percent of the population that is served by fluoridated water and no state has complete i guess it's not fluoridization it's fluoridation and uh kentucky has 99.9 percent and the nih um has touted the fluoridation of water as being one of the 10 biggest uh, significant events to happen in terms of improving public health in the last hundred years. So they put out a list. It has things like um, birth control. It has things like uh, vaccinations and it has the fluoridation of water. So the crazy thing about the fluoridation of water is that um, I think it's a little bit more controversial than some of the other ones on this list. Like we can all agree, I'm I'm going to talk about the uh, smallpox vaccine here, Billy. Um, the smallpox vaccine has been a tremendous asset to public health. We can agree on that, right? Absolutely. I it think saved, I got re-upped recently. Saved millions and millions and millions of lives. The uh, the uh, fluoridation of water is still actually very much, from what I've read, it's very much up for debate right now, and people get upset. Like scientists get upset if other scientists report on the efficacy of the fluoridation of water, because they see it as like, this is one of these things that could be considered to be a, a much bigger public health good than it would be um, in extreme examples to be a, a, a downturn in public health. But people don't like to talk about it. I don't know. They, I think it's called like the third rail of, uh, of the modern science debate right now. So there's, it's everywhere. Like we said, uh, the EPA has a drinking water standard, which which shows you the maximum amount of fluoride allowable in public drinking water systems, and that's four milligrams per liter. If you get higher levels than that for an extended time, you can have skeletal fluorosis, which is too much fluoride in your bones, and this can result in joint stiffness and pain, weak bones or fractures in older adults. It can weaken your bones, and the EPA has a secondary standard of no more than two milligrams per liter to protect kids from dental fluorosis. So the secondary standard is just like, tw it's it's half as much fluoride, and that's what they recommend that you follow. Um, now, when it comes to drinking water, I think we did an episode on water a while ago, but um, I'm, I'm usually in the mindset that like, if you live in a city um, or a, a, a medium-sized town, your drinking water that comes out of your tap is probably better for you than if you go buy bottled water because you've got like plastic chemicals in the, in the bottled water, which has been like a proven thing that there are some bad things in there. And public drinking water is tested so frequently that when there does happen to be some sort of contamination, they usually catch it pretty quickly. And it's usually better for you to just drink tap water, especially if you filter it. So people said that about New York. They're like, New York has the cleanest tap water in the country, which I, I've done no research on, but just mm. seems completely impossible. They no, say that so, because the bagels. I, I, They're like, so that's, the, a, that's our secret to the bagels here. The source, the source, I know where New York City tap water comes from. I've cliff dived there and the water there tastes amazing when it's right in the reservoir. And that's what they test all the time. And then they test it when it comes in to uh, like the treatment plant to put it through uh, where they add the chemicals, where they actually put a uh, small shellfish. So there's tiny microscopic shrimp that they use to clean the water in New York City, which technically makes the water not kosher. On top of that, the thing is, 
that water is extremely clean, extremely, you know, balanced with electrolytes. The problem with New York tap water is once it goes through the pipes to get to you. So, you know, no one's ripped up all of New York City's pipes from its beginning. There's a lot of lead pipes still in New York. So you have to filter New York water for heavy metals because you don't know what type of piping it's going through. So that's the problem with New York City tap water. But where it comes from, it's it's upstate. I've been there. Billy's but jumped in it. It's got a little bit of a little bit of Billy's ass in every glass. <laughs> yeah. But it's real clean. But that gets filtered out in the treatment plant. But it's some of the best water I've ever seen. Did the you source. just admit to terrorism? Yep, I did. <laughs> like you contaminated an entire like Dude, you're allowed to fish city. on those look, you're allowed to fish on those lakes, but you're not allowed to swim in those reservoirs like you know people always do it it's great water so you're actually protesting the unjust law which is no law at all they clean it anyway civil disobedience billy's making good trouble <laughs> i'm making good trouble i'm throwing backflips off the 30 foot cliffs into reservoir water you're making our water a little bit more extreme i like that yeah like don't like if you're drinking water we're like yo a dude did a backflip into this you're like sick yeah Sick Thank water. You. It's yeah. It's like That's a good extreme. name for it. Do y'all drink tap water? I drink yep. tap water. Yeah. Yep. Got to run it through. Yep. I refuse. I won't do it. Why? Why? Dude, it's the microplastics the are get. worse for you. you can, it's, the, it's the best water you can get. I just, I, uh, I won't do it. What do you drink? So, so who, water. Who convinced? No, so who convinced me was my my stepdad, and he broke down how because he's a, again he's a PhD geneticist, and so he has like this concoction in his house that he like filters his water through. But he said, even if you don't have that, he's like drinking out of the tap is far healthier than bottled water. Seems counterintuitive to me, but I just. I... The, the taste that you taste are minerals. A lot of those minerals get filtered out of tap water, which are good for you. I guess that makes sense. I just, I'm a bottled man. <laughs> the microplastics <laughs> are xenoestrogens and are going to kill your fertility. I don't believe you. <laughs> Okay. Or they um, could cause cancer. Yeah, I mean, like I mean, the that, I mean it, it may do it in stents, but I, I've been drinking bottled water my whole life and I got five kids, brother. I, I wish it happened a little earlier. Right? <laughs> yeah. But, you know, also like. That's because you, your football coaches are too hard on you. They wouldn't let you drink enough water at practice. That's, that's, that's fact. I was dehydrated and that kept my sperm count up. <laughs> uh, so from the cdc fluoride has been proven to prevent teeth from decay bacteria in the mouth produce acid when a person eats sugary foods the acid eats away minerals from the tooth surface making the tooth weaker and increasing the chance of developing cavities fluoride helps to rebuild and strengthen the tooth surface or enamel water fluoridation prevents tooth decay by providing frequent and consistent contact with low levels of fluoride by keeping the tooth strong and solid fluoride stops cavities from forming and can even rebuild the tooth surface so uh, I think that it's been proven that fluoride, the chemical fluoride itself does prevent cavities and it helps build stronger teeth. The question then becomes, should we put fluoride in drinking water for everybody to have um, where you can't really opt out of it? That's, that's a trickier question. And they did research leading up to the 1940s. Um, Dr. Frederick McKay investigated it he examined a few thousand children living near pikes peak in colorado with conspicuously stained teeth but somehow fewer cavities than other children billy that's the over fluoridation of that water that's because the water in colorado there's a lot of places in colorado where they have a higher naturally occurring instance of fluoride in there because of the the rocks that it gets run through and filtered through and uh the researchers concluded that the stain was a result of a high concentration of fluoride in the region's drinking water and the rocks around Pikes Peak contained the mineral cryolite, one of whose constituents is fluorine. And then as the rain fell, runoff water dissolved fluoride, which made its way into the water supply. And so they study that and that's that's what they used to determine that we should put fluoride in the water in Grand Rapids, Michigan, which then expanded. I did watch some like 1950s uh, propaganda movies about like the doctors that were putting fluoride in the water and they were just like yep we we're seeing like a thousand percent decrease and it's uh perfectly natural and no side effects and it's great it's fantastic and uh and it was very much just like them tooting their own horn for being like look what we did to prevent tooth decay up here uh 
so that's kind of how it started was back in the 40s and 50s until now where it's like everywhere pretty much has fluoride. And the argument that they make is having fluoride in your water uh, because we know that fluoride can decrease tooth decay. It should be in everyone's water across the board. That way people that uh, live in every community have access to having stronger teeth because a lot of communities or people, a lot of people in general can't afford you know, the same dental care as others. So if your teeth start going away, then guess what? You're kind of fucked and you're just going to have to deal with a lifetime of mouth infections and you won't be able to pay to get those repaired. So that's that's like the overall thinking of why there's fluoride in our water. If they were truly concerned about the public health that much, they put creatine in the water and we'd all have the neuroprotectant powers of creatine and all have a little bit of extra bulk, a little extra water weight. Make be America stronger. jacked again. Have a little higher muscle mass. I mean, look at the dudes from the 1950s. Like, if you pull up, they're all sort of pretty cut, pretty jacked. Everyone from and the 50s was strong. Yeah. I mean, you see those videos. Like, we need to put creatine in the water to get America Our jacked. Our offensive again. lineman weighed like 212 pounds. Yeah. The University of Chicago championship team, their starting 11 added up to under 2,000 pounds. No, but I'm saying that's that's unfortunately a counterexample to what you're saying. But they were all lean. We used to be stronger. Do you think offensive linemen now are stronger or weaker? I'll put it this way, Billy. Pound per if pound. They, if they had to bench 225 pounds instead of 185 pounds, which group of people do you think would be able to do more reps? The offensive linemen in the 2024 combine or the University of Michigan team in 1951? I think we'll never know. We'll never know. Yeah, <laughs> we will. No, Billy's right. We'll, we'll actually never know the answer to that question, unfortunately. Oh, I will. I will absolutely know that. The thing is, the reason why there the, it got put in the water is because it was industrial waste that they had stockpiles of. So a huge byproduct of industrial synthetic fertilizer production, which was huge in the 1940s, was hydrogen fluoride and silicon tetrafluoride. They The government wasn't being benevolent by just giving us all, yes, fluoride was needed to protect teeth. And that's what sort of uh, toothpaste came along and served. But they're just dumping it because they had all this waste, and if they diluted it in the water supply, it would get rid of it more effectively. But wait, where, so you're, you're where saying, do you get where do you get that from? Like, where did you get that? So that they they the the initial cause of putting fluoride in water was not for health benefits; is because they had an excess. That's how they they played it off. And I will send you the article from Ohio State University. But right. wait, Billy, I, no, so, I'm not accusing you. I'm just, I know, I know, but that, that, that's my source. A quick question on that. Um, so you seem to be conflating two separate things. One is a big businesses and industrial manufacturing that are producing these byproducts and the other with the government. So you're saying lobbyists, that the, you're saying that the, the manufacturers were creating all these harmful chemicals and then the government was like, give us those chemicals. We're going to put them in the water. No, they probably had uh, lobbyists and doctors that were paid off, that were on payroll, that lobbied this to the government. And the government was like, "Hey, OK, let's put it in the water. And uh, they did. I think so. Based on what I know about, like how that process goes, it's usually the lobbyists that pay the government to look the other way when stuff's running into groundwater. So like in, in Kentucky and West Virginia, you've got a lot of very bad drinking water occasionally that has all these like byproducts and chemicals that run into it. And it's not the government that's putting it into your water, but it's the, it's the mining companies and well, industrial no. companies that are putting it into the ground. And then the government is just like, we don't want to enforce this because you guys pay us a shitload of money in taxes. Well, so, no, I mean, they were selling, they had to buy the fluoride from somewhere. Right. Mm -hmm. So they bought it from these, companies that were producing other chemicals and fluoride was a byproduct under the guise of, you know, it, it probably is true. Fluoride is good for your teeth. We know that low levels, but they probably oversold it and sold it to many places. Some that probably had already fluoride in the water and they oversaturated the water was way too much fluoride. That could have happened. They could, they could have oversaturated some of the water. And so at the time, the thinking was that this is the best place for every, everyone to get fluoride. It's in your environment now. It's in the foods that you eat. It's in anything that you make with tap water, which they thought would be a benefit. 
but then since then, once the studies have come out showing that uh, low level of fluoride is good for dental health, now, like Billy said, you get in toothpaste, right? Yeah. You get, you get it in a lot of other stuff. So fluoride is, it's kind of everywhere now. So if the question then becomes like, do we need it in our tap water? If we're getting it from other sources, uh, you know, if we're, if it's already in our toothpaste that we're using twice a day, then do we need it in the tap water, which could put us over the top in terms of like having too much fluoride? I mean, it's one of those things where we don't really know the cause, but now that we're seeing the impacts, um, if we, so like there's several studies that linked fluoride exposure to mitochondrial dysfunction. And we all know what mitochondria is. It's the number one thing you remember from like bio class. It's the powerhouse of the cell. Um, and because of that, like it may have caused neurotoxic toxicity in children. It may have caused a host of problems that may be impacting the entire population. We don't know. Yeah. So you are supposed, if you're a pregnant woman, you're supposed to avoid uh, products that have high amounts of fluoride in them for the development of, of the fetus. So like, I think it's black tea, right? Pregnant women aren't supposed to drink black tea fish. because it's got a bunch more fluoride. Was that fish as well? A lot of like raw fish, but I think I don't think that's fluoride. That's I think that's they do mercury. have. Yeah, first fish do have um, fluoride in it, some fluoride, uh, but it's I think it's more for mercury. Yeah, so they they try to limit the amount of fluoride that you're getting if you're a pregnant woman, and so if you're if you're drinking tap water that has a very high concentration, and you're drinking other things that that contribute to the fluoride buildup then it could, it could have some adverse impacts on, on your baby. Um, so yeah, there are some cities, like we said, uh, Portland, they do not have fluoride. They've tried to get it passed a few times. Every time it is passed, they have like another secondary vote afterwards and they vote it out. So Portland's just like, don't fuck with our water out here. Um, I don't They're know. Pretty unruly out there. They are pretty unruly. Portland's I a mean, weird place. Fluoride, I mean, where it gets really conspiratorial uh, is people start looking at this study that talks about calcification of the pineal gland caused by fluoride. And that's where it gets crazy. All right. So if you look in the group chat, it's a it's a video of me sitting in a dental chair. This was in 2018, maybe a little before that, maybe 16. I'm high on the gas because I just got my uh, wisdom teeth removed, and I say that exact thing. I say, I say, I say, uh, fluoride uh, crystallizes the pineal gland, and that's where our third eye is. But I say it really funny. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna play this out loud here. <laughs> Shit, funny as hell. Crystallizes the pineal gland. Oh, does it? Yeah. I didn't know that. And the pineal gland is where our third eye is. <laughs> I don't know. I went too deep on him. <laughs> what was that last part? I said I went too deep on him. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there's a uh, there's a debate about fluoride in water. Like, I I understand why the debate's out there. Like, should the government be putting chemicals and like essentially medicating everybody, right? So they're putting something in to help our health. That's what they're saying that they're doing. But is it like the government's responsibility to essentially force people to take this chemical because it's for your own good? So it's an interesting debate because you could you could extrapolate this and look at other places in the world like India. Um, there's they have some severe issues with people that have iodine deficiencies in India and other developing countries. And so our our um, response to that has been to put iodine in salt, right? And so there's a bunch of salt that is uh, that you can find it on your shelf and it says, what is it, I, I, iodized salt? Mm -hmm. And so if you don't have enough iodine in your, in your diet or in your body, you get goiters in your neck. You get these big ass, it's uh, your, what is it, your thyroid that swells yeah. up and becomes almost like a tumor in your own neck that can really fuck you up badly if you see people walking around with like these giant neck bulges it's usually a result of not having enough iodine so other governments have taken steps to put in iodine in, in salt which is just like a uh it's a byproduct you don't really taste it 
but if it's in everything, then you get a, a naturally occurring dose of iodine. It also prevents you from uh, from nuclear radiation, right? Isn't that what they took in in um, uh, shit? What's the what's the series that was about Chernobyl? Was it called Chernobyl? Yeah, like, yeah. yeah it, Chernobyl. They were taking like iodine tablets to prevent radiation. Fire if you have a grab things, bag, you should really definitely stockpile those. Yeah, iodine tablets, and uh, so it, like other governments, including our own, have taken steps like that in the past to like help prevent an issue before it starts by putting shit in something that you would eat all the time or drink all the time. So it does happen. But the question then becomes like, okay, is fluoride worth it? What's your take on it? So, um, based on everything that I've read about fluoride, I think fluoride occurs in other things that we use enough where we're all getting, most people are getting enough fluoride from their toothpaste or from other things that we don't necessarily need to have it mandated in our water. Okay. True. That's kind of where I'm at right now. And I, I've read, I've read a bunch of stuff on it. Um, and it doesn't make you anti fluoride because fluoride is good for your teeth, but it is like, okay, should we, should we be exposing everyone to the same baseline level of fluoridation when there are other environmental factors that might kick it over the top and make it more of a drawback than an improvement. So, I mean, and it makes you communist. <clears throat> of course. Uh, that's what happened to me. I, you know, I grew up with high fluoridization in my water, but I, I just, I, I, this is one of the things where just humbly, I just don't know. You know what I mean? Like I can read, I, cause this is where like it's hard to parse out like what is true and not true, um, and so especially because I don't care enough to like dig deep into like I I don't I just don't know man it's just like I have a very neutral opinion on this um, I'm sure if I dig in deeper I will develop one but just the shit that I've read it just doesn't seem like it, I'm not gonna change the way I'm living because I have seen no effects. And that may be anecdotal, but I just don't have anything else to go off of. So most people, um, or most of the things I've read that are in support of the fluoridation of water have been just like statements from dental groups, from uh, the Surgeon General, people that are in these positions of power that say like, it's good for you. It gives you demonstrably improved dental health. But in terms of like the studies that I've read about it, the actual studies behind it, it's more like kind of up in the air. It helps you if you don't have any fluoride in your water. And if you live in an area where you don't get naturally occurring fluoride at all, putting a baseline in is a good thing for you. But if you live in an area that has uh, already like a decent amount in there, adding that in along with the fluoride and toothpaste, I think if you, if you give somebody big, big doses, it's a very bad thing. If somebody gets like a, a slightly elevated dose, there's not like a huge, huge public health issue with it. That's what I would want to see. Is there, is there, what does the, the study say about too much fluoride? I know any, any of any chemical could kill you. Yeah. But like something of like a tad more fluoride in the water supply. Is there any studies showing any significant, uh, I guess, damage to yeah. the human body? 58 to 76% of people across several different countries that the study was done uh, had, what's, the, what's study? What's study? Can you send it? Oh, wait, time out. Time out. We actually have a very special guest joining us right now for a new segment on the show. Bring him in. Bring him in. He's coming. Okay. New special guest. Can't wait to, to see how this goes. It's Francis. Oh, hey, Francis. Oh, Francis. <laughs> what's up, dude? Oh. Great to see you. Do you want to talk some studies? Welcome to macrodosing, Francis. Um, this is this is Francis versus Billy. Uh, the debate that I think everybody has wanted to see happen. Francis, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule of um, cutting the stream on Chris Klemmer. Oh yeah, I apologize that uh, I had a hard time. We we uh, we we have things going on here, believe it or not. Yeah. So um, this will be a, a fun experiment to see how it works out. Billy was talking about your blog, which I thought was very well written. Funny shit week. about uh, about getting the Billy football experience here in Chicago when you guys did the combine together, and yes. Billy had some points that he was refuting, and there were some words and accusations thrown back and forth, 
And it all centered around the fact that I think the two of you are uh, very intelligent in your own in your own ways and uh, having a debate series between the two of you on a topic that neither one is prepared for would be maybe interesting content. So we're going to give it a try if that's all right with you, Francis. That's great. Hey, I just want to say hi to Arian really quick. I haven't seen Arian since the, the Ryder Cup, which I had a great time with him on. Good stuff, man. We went, we went viral, dog. Man, we did. Boy, I still regret that I putted that ball in the hole because you made yours. It's facts, but I, 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 I think you was fine, bro. Like it'd be them, them highbrow golfers would be like, it's a, it's a five. Like fuck those people. Like those people are fucking idiots, dog. Like it was a, a cool little game that wasn't that crucial, and they didn't set the rules. That's, That's the right. biggest thing. They didn't set the rules before that. That if you have to, you know, so you have to see it through. So fuck those people. What's up to you too? Love that. Good to see you all. Good to see Be you. PT. Speaking of which, PT, Rubin, well. do you know if there's going to be another uh, Ryder Cup? I don't think this year. Okay. That's going to be bad news then. Because by the by this, by the, the next Ryder Cup, I'm going to be nasty, dog. So, like, it's going, it's not good for you. Good news for who, who's on the other side. I'm going to be, it's it's going to get scary. And you're going to be a couple years wiser. I didn't wiser. think you'd show up. I'm happy you did. Wait, oh, Billy. man. You I didn't know never... he was showing up. <laughs> I knew that he'd show face in some way. I didn't think he nope. was going to do it. There's no way, Billy. <laughs> Billy, you didn't know. We, no one told you. I didn't this. know. I didn't know he was coming. But I, if he, you know, had any cojones, he would show in some way. So I'm happy <laughs> he's here. You just set it off. Okay. Okay. So the topic for today's debate is: uh, Did you think that Francis would ever show up to debate? <laughs> you? Uh, no, that won't be. That won't be the topic. Uh, just off the top of my head. I was thinking about this last night. What can we get these two guys to to discuss? I think a, maybe a good starting point would be just the United States against China mm. in war. I had a feeling. World War Three, but it's just the U.S. and China getting into it. Um, who would win in a in a hot war? What does that mean? I think it's <laughs> the opposite of a cold war. <laughs> That's a common term. So what do you mean a hot war? It's the opposite of a cold war. Yeah, a war. In a full, about, and we're talking Congress declares war. We're talking military war. Yes. A war. A hot war is a war with active military hostilities. Okay, yeah. So when I say war, I wasn't talking about like just building a bunch of missiles and then Lu lukewarm. No, lukewarm we're not talking war. about we're not talking about psyop like leave this world behind type sabotage. That I'm sure that will be a part of it. Uh, but it's also guns. Uh, PFT, I, I think Billy's right to clarify. Are we talking about skullduggery and sort of subterfuge, back channel cloak and daggering? Um... Soft power. <laughs> yeah. Moves. Is that what we're saying here? We're talking about war, Francis. Uh, all that, all that could be a part of war. Okay. Active still, hostilities, guns. I feel like it's really important for us to know what type of war we're talking about. <laughs> yes. Army guys shooting each other. Got it. Okay. All right. So um we'll give we'll we'll give the first opportunity to speak to Billy Football. No, Billy. I'd like our guest to go first. Oh, Jesus you Christ. would like that. You freak. Let's, yeah. let's flip a coin. Yeah. Let's, let's talk coin. about let's, let's, let's talk about a, let's give a neutral this is neutral moderator here. So okay. I want I want to see are, are we gonna do opening statements, closing statements? If the person who goes first, does he get to go last? Okay. Like what type of debates are we doing? Yeah, it's gonna be two rounds and it's gonna be opening statement, opening statement, and uh then it's gonna be a, a refutation of the other person's opening statement and then the other person gets to refute all the other points too so it's going it's just going to go a b a b okay flip, flip a coin pft it, it should go a b Jesus a b b a seems kind of like you don't want to debate billy no i'm down to go Fra then why don't you do it francis what do you think about the format I couldn't have followed Billy's weird code there if you fucking paid me to. Because you're slow. I'm happy to just, what, what's a typical opening statement, his opening statement, and then I think it's just sort of rebuttals or something. Okay, yeah. Yeah, we'll do opening statement, opening statement. But you should cap it at, what, five minutes total? and And you should cap the opening statements. At a time limit. Okay, there will be a one-minute time limit for each opening. I think statement. that's great. 
That's great. And I'll get my timer out right now. I'm going to flip a coin. Um, heads, tails. Francis, you're the guest. You're the away team right now, so you can call it in the air, okay? You got it. I'm going to call tails. It's heads. So Billy goes first. Great. I choose to go second. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> this is just no. going to be a debate about a debate. <laughs> Why can't you just ever do anything normally, Billy? Yeah. He's stalling. All right, Billy, you go first. Your opening statement okay. commences. Three, two, one, go. In a hot war, the United States would have advantages in technological, strategic, and international advantage. Usually opening statements are written. First things first, we technologically have the upper hand because we have not only high, higher advanced aeronautics, higher advanced nautical strategy, but also infantry and artillery. First example is we have next gen fighters, all of which are higher, uh, highly, uh, much more highly advanced than Chinese fighters. We have more and more advanced nuclear submarines our naval fleet is larger and more advanced. We have more aircraft carriers, nuclear aircraft carriers, uh, to be precise. Our missile systems on paper are much more advanced, as well as the ones that we might not have on okay. paper. That is, um, that is China your time. claims to have that is your minute. That supersonic. Is, that is your minute. We said five minutes. No, it's a five-minute-long debate. Opening statements are concluded at a minute. I even gave you a couple seconds grace period there. You never told me it was a minute. Just literally said at the oh, beginning. Oh, you can listen tomorrow. Okay, Francis, <laughs> your chance yeah. to make an opening statement. Five, four, three, two, one, go. All right, I'll preface this by saying I, I don't know a ton about this. Uh, uh, Billy and I have had this debate, and you know, I just regurgitated what I was told. But basically, if we're talking specifically about the the current situation, I think Taiwan is the the major contention, and I think China has a major home field advantage. They are 100 miles from Taiwan. We would be fighting a very much an away game. Um, they have a currently they have a larger mass army than we do. They actually have more troops and forces. It's the most populous nation in the world. And I think they have larger magazine depth. I took a lot of these points from General Flynn, who made these points and said these are China's military advantages over the United States as recently as October of 2023. That is my opening statement. Okay, magazine depth. Interesting. Does anybody know what magazine depth means? I just think they have bullets? more bullets, quite literally. Oh, more bullets. They have bullets. larger munitions at this point. Okay, interesting. Um, Billy, you get to refute that point. And first I'll, give, I'll give you a minute. Three, first point I want to refute two, is... One, go. Most of China's personnel is conscripts, as we are now seeing in the Ukraine. Conscripts do not fight as effectively as a professional army as the U.S. Army is. Every U.S. soldier is currently a professional. Any volunteers or a draft has not been enacted, and we don't need to because we have a large enough fighting force. On mag at, In regards to magazine depth, the reason why they have more bullets is because their guns jam a lot and are in more inaccurate. Take the AK-47 versus the M-16. They spray and pray while we are more surgical. Um, in regards to Taiwan... Uh, as being the battleground, we've already had tons of hypothetical situations where we defend Taiwan, and a lot of it has to do with our South Pacific allies in Oceania. Uh, Australia would be a huge asset, as well as our uh, posturing in the region in regards to many of our bases in Japan, Korea, uh, and um, our allies in Australia. Those are my three points I'm refuting. The mass of china and their populist production power as we know uh is very powerful but as we know made in china holds a lot more weight than we give it when it comes to quality all right zero and that's it that's that's your time thank you billy uh francis you get to refute billy's assertions three two were this one. closing statements no these are just rebuttals refutations I I, uh, I guess, you know, to me, the, the whole conscript thing, um, I, I don't, I don't know what to say about that. I mean, I get, you know, 
would we, and this is a hypothetical war, would we enact a draft? Maybe we'd have drafted soldiers. We might have to, to match the amount that they have. Um, I would say that to the, your point of having allies in the region, Australia is 3,488 miles from Taiwan. China is 100 miles. I think they're getting there before our Australian allies are. Um, and to the end point, I was told uh, that there's this whole thing about the kill chain, which I talked to Billy about, which is that our best chance of beating the Chinese in a war over Taiwan is if we can ward them off before they've gotten into their kill chain, their process of killing. Uh, but if we don't stop them in the very early going, at that point, it will be too late. That's all I know. Okay. All right. Good points. Good pa salient points made on all sides. Um, I will give you guys the opportunity to make your closing statements now. Billy, go. As we have seen, Francis has moved the goalposts from a all-out hot war between the United States and China that would be fought over many fronts and has specifically made it against Taiwan. In the future, a very small asset in a global war. This front will probably be stretching amongst Central Asia, uh, combining our NATO allies, uh, most of our European allies, our Middle Eastern allies, into many fronts in Africa. The small island of Taiwan will actually be very inconsequential in this global hot war, but Francis has tried to focus on it because it is the only thing that he thinks he can win. Um, the United States won't need to take as many conscripts because our large professional army is actually quite close to China's army, which is all conscripts and all basically civilians. Um, Francis failed to uh, talk about Russia's involvement in this global war, which they may not take China's side, meaning that they are alone against the world. The United States will and always will dominate China in a hot war. Thank you. Thank Billy. you. Some hefty accusations there, Francis, moving the goalposts. Francis, you Billy, have the opportunity. Billy, to if on. you think that Russia's not siding with China in a war against the United States, uh, you know. He made an ad hominem showing I have won. <laughs> no, I'm just saying that's probably the craziest thing you said. Uh, <laughs> so there's been no ad hominem. That's crazy. Uh, he just made an ad hominem at you accusing you of making ad hominems true fair enough here Oops. give francis his time he needs it um i don't think taiwan is look inconsequential I, I i didn't realize that we were talking about just a hypothetical hot war, war between you the u.s and china which i guess we were i should have i should have done that the reason i focused on taiwan was because that was what billy and i argued about ourselves um, and I think that that in 2025 is going to be the place. Uh, and I do think Taiwan is actually incredibly important to us because they are one of the largest suppliers of micro chips to the United States, which we use in quite literally everything. Um, not to the chips act. What's that? Am I allowed to robot? A Biden policy, by the way. Yes. Proceed. Yeah. You guys can just feel free to scream at each other now. Okay, so uh, we're trying to have domestic chips act sorts like on semi, uh, which is a company in Fishkill, New York, that's currently uh, doing serious manufacturing of the chips we need in our military. Um, there are plenty of other examples in uh, the Northeast where they're, I think, Ch uh, Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi have made a concerted effort to open many of these large manufacturing plants that were in Taiwan, in actually New York State. So uh, the CHIPS Act is extremely important uh, and one of the reasons why Nancy Pelosi has made so much money on NVIDIA stock. Um, yeah. All right. Taiwan Francis. will not be consequential in the future because we are trying to make it not consequential in case something like this happens. A hot yeah, war with China. I, I think that's a, a noble idea, Billy, but uh, we don't have time. And right now I'm reading that in 1990, the U.S. made 37% of the world's chips. 30 years later, that number has cratered to 12%. While the country might design some of the most advanced chips in the world, almost all the manufacturing takes place in foreign countries. I don't think that if we're talking about this war happening on, in the near future, which is again, I guess maybe I'm, I'm picking 
selectively there um that we have time to to boost our microchip manufacturing to make us independent of taiwan's uh supply we are currently passing legislation to do that to become independent when it comes to microchips and hopefully we get there using american ingenuity capitalism and all the free market things that make us america in the best country in the I don't world like, i don't like it when billy does his book report voice well, guess what? You He's know, my increasingly actually, doing it, by the way. I don't what, know becoming intelligent? No, your book report voice where, like, if, if Francis wasn't on this call, you'd be like, Francis is such a fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, when I, like, actually wrote a great New Age creationist Bible verse. Yeah. Yeah, you did do that. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to throw this out there. Y'all can take it or leave it. Uh, I would like a less structured debate where they just talk about how they don't like each other. <laughs> We can yeah, do that. I think, yeah, I think it has to be a topic that Francis. I will, I will voice. Hold on, Billy. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Billy. Hold on, Billy. Hold on, Billy. Hold on, hold on, Billy. Billy, Billy, calm your ass down, G. I think y'all, y'all, y'all should have a debate. One of the two, either what Big T says, where y'all just like hammer the shit out, which I have, which would be funny as shit to watch, or we have an actual debate where we like prep y'all and y'all actually go after over a over a a topic that y'all have you know real contention with, and you can actually like prep for that would be dope well i both. think i'd be very interested to hear what billy billy's uh what he thought were my inaccuracies in that blog that i wrote I the inaccuracies that... specifically have to do with the basketball um we did not <laughs> lose 11 to 0 i we never took a second, we, we lost the second game 11 0 i i think there was some points scored in no game. we didn't score a point billy we didn't score a single point in the second game we lost 11 0 it was embarrassing Second point, I did not shoot off the check. That never happened. the first basket of the game, you check the ball, and then you ho hoisted a three, and you that made... That is not true. And it was the worst thing that could have happened to us. <laughs> we did not... <laughs> that is not true. Pull the tape. I would have never gotten a check and not passed it first and you just straight up ball. shot it. We have we have six other people who can corroborate this, so we can check this, on that. But I we, would have never you checked the ball. Team. You checked the ball. Team. You got it back, team. and you shot, and you made it. Oh, oh, and I oh thought, okay. So that's that's a different story. It oh, was a different story. you mean the truth? Which <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Francis, yeah, what's truth. it like, Billy? Francis, you said that I got the ball after a check and shot it directly, which is illegal. That is what you described. Saying no, that I passed no. it away and then no. got it back. I am saying. I'm saying what you're saying. I'm saying you checked the ball. You got it back from the person you checked it to. And you shot a three and you made it and scored. We said you couldn't dribble off the check. You can shoot or, or pass. That's not true. You can't shoot off a check. So you're saying I you made did, a three? You did and you made it and nobody had a problem with it. And I thought, holy shit, Billy football is really good at basketball. I had no idea. This story doesn't make sense because they would never have counted a shot off the check. Does anybody count shots off the check? No. We'll ask. We'll ask. That, I remember your exactly story does who not make playing. your story does not make pickup sense. And Francis, I'm so. What we should really talk about is um, I did get a little. Uh, I said a some lot. mean things behind yeah. your back, basically, which I think was some bitch shit. And well, I will you, say you, them to your you face. You said them out loud. I wouldn't say they were behind my back. I was no, right no, no, to I, you. Well, now that I see you, I feel better about saying them. Sometimes I think you're <laughs> condescending. <laughs> and, <laughs> and sometimes I think you're condescending and you literally think that other people's uh, opinions infuriate you. As you even said on the yak, just because they're trying to speak about things that you assume you have higher knowledge about. And it, I don't understand it. And I think it's, you know, kind of bullshit. And maybe like, maybe it's me. I'm not a perfect human, but I think you sometimes talk down on other people. I talk down on a lot of people. <laughs> it's true. And so honestly, then it's fair for me to call you out for talking down on people. Oh, I don't have a problem with that, Billy. Okay. Wh where, oh. where's that? Where's that coming from? Why is that? Why is that relevant? Because it's what I said. No, you were coaching me. Oh, I think there's oh, you're a little talking miscommunication about... here. So um, you're talking, Francis, about what happened on the court when Billy was like yelling at you to switch and all this weird stuff. Uh, Billy is specifically, I think, referring to um, last week on the show when he said that you did some bitch shit. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see it. Yeah. Also, call, also called out your uh, Harvard education decision. It's not really like you wasn't you didn't really go to Harvard. No, that's not what I said. That's not what I said. That's he called not you what a I dumb said. jock. 
No, I did not say that. I said that you are a classic Harvard man who acts like a Harvard man and talks down on other people. That is what I said. That is not what you said. There were I definitely not, things about it, the I, admissions process. Cause that I asked, is not I asked, true. I asked, I asked that is not true. I, asked, I specifically that asked that is not you true. Now people at, are trying to start shit, Francis. No, I'm not going to do what you said, but <laughs> No, no, I'm not going to let you guys. Francis, I, Billy, 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 okay, you started it. <laughs> Billy, right or wrong? Billy, right or wrong? You, you, I, do you remember me responding with, are you saying he's a Nepo baby? And you said, I no, said he's not no. a Nepo. Yeah, you said no. No, I said no. I said, I said just because you got good grades no, no, and you no, got no, a good hell, hell. Go back to the fucking tape. I said just because you got good grades, the, you're the smart enough to get to Harvard and good enough in sports doesn't mean you get to act like you're better no, than everybody else. The implication you said I know guys. That is like not him. the implication. Who you you're went, making you, the implication. You said you said I know guys like Francis who, who went to Harvard, who went to Harvard, who Aren't really who want to who want to claim that Harvard life and aren't really no, aren't really no, like. No, I said a lot of people oh, go to Harvard. A lot of guys that I know who I played football with, they go to Harvard. They are like, oh shit! They come back from Harvard and they try to act that. better than everybody because they went to Harvard. No, it, they man. they totally deserve to get into Harvard. They totally deserve to be there. But there's this like, <laughs> I got to be better than everybody, or you know, I'm not walking the walk and talking the talk. That's what I said. I said nothing about the merit of getting in because look, if you get into Harvard, that's fucking awesome. No, Billy, with that. Billy once Billy once said to me, he goes, "The fact that you were a recruited athlete at Harvard, but I got into Williams without being recruited, means that it was actually harder for me to get into Williams than it was for you to get into Harvard." <laughs> that is also different than what I said because I was a recruited <laughs> athlete. So that proves. Well, that was I'm what saying, was, that was. That's why I I'm found saying that weird that, because it it went against. Your, but that's not what I said. That's not what I said. I said that there rhetoric was, about being a recruited football player. That was something that I was. Does Harvard not have more admission spots for football? But this is what I don't understand, Billy. You just said just that that place. wasn't true. What I was saying, and now you're qualifying it, which affirms its truth. No, 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 no. I was just saying that small D, like a smaller school, is harder to get into than a larger school. That's what I was saying. That's not what you said at all. That was what I was equating, but that's just significant. I was a recruited athlete, so uh, why would I say I wasn't a recruited athlete? That would make me look Stanford like a nerd. University. True. So Billy, I think unfortunately, you know, I'll, I'll pull back the third wall a little bit here. The truth of the matter is that I I was a recruited lacrosse player, and I would have, I probably would have gotten into to the school without lacrosse, but I, it definitely helped um, because I was sort of higher on the academic index. The I don't know if you know like the yeah whole. the bands I I know the bands yeah so um but at the same time like I when I talk to people away from the internet and the world and I I'm always immediately admitting that you know I was a recruited athlete I wasn't some fucking brainiac um and so you know I try to I try to play that down but then what happens is like you know you you kind of you meet your own narrative that people create, or I'm sure I contribute to it. And then I, I I like to play it up. So like when I correct people's grammar publicly on the yak, or I call out Brandon Walker, or I talk down to people, uh, that's part of my character a little bit. Well, Brandon maybe Walker part of me deserves that's to like be that. talked down to sometimes. What's that? Brandon deserves to be talked down to sometimes. Sure. I, Francis, on, can, I would can like I, to take you on a clear date. Something up? Hold on. I'll, Francis, I'll, I'll I would like to take you on hold a on, date. Hold on, Billy, because you got <laughs> okay. directly with the bullshit that you said. You're going to try to tell me I was lying. I just listened back to what you said on the podcast <laughs> and exactly what the fuck I thought you said, though. You said, I said, what did he go to Harvard for? Because I didn't, I don't know Francis' background. I said, what did he go to Harvard for? You chirped and said lacrosse, right? That's what you said. And I was like, and then you went off on a spill about how, well, I, I said, I said, are you saying he a Nepo baby? And you said, no, I'm just saying, I know so many dudes like him who 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 get who go to Harvard and want to put on the Harvard man hat, right? And then go and then when they get there, he, he said, "What did you, you say?" God, I just I just listened. You said who who get there on the merits of like the sport that they play, put on the Harvard man act and are okay or at stand, or okay at standardized testing. Then get there, then realize, oh shit, am I really supposed to be here? 
That's what you said. You go look it back at it. That that completely they got in. They completely deserve to be there by those merits. No, bro, saying, that's not your implication. That's not what that you means. Said. You know what I'm talking about, bro. You imposter said, syndrome. Do you no, guys know the definition of there. imposter syndrome? Really, they oh. say they, I will not saying, be gaslit. I will not <laughs> be gaslit. <laughs> what is it? You said this shit, bro. bro imposter imposter syndrome means that even though you're supposed to be there, you feel like you shouldn't be there. <laughs> Yes, but Billy, it's okay for me to feel that way. But if you say what you said, then you're you're taking that away. You're saying you you're saying he doesn't deserve to be there. You can't no, place I'm imposter syndrome on other people. To be there, but you feel like you don't deserve to be but there. You so didn't you say you didn't say to Arian. You didn't say to Arian. Uh, Francis probably feels this way, which no. is too bad. Yes, I said. I said no, he didn't. probably felt. It started I with, said insecurity. No. Dude, you don't say that either. I, I think, think, I think I what's did. happening. Wait, 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 I was saying that he was insecure. Wait, dude, pull wait, it up. You I'm pull up. Bill, no, I, I just just say thank you to the team. I said that it was the product of his insecurity to project intelligence so that to reflect about it. Billy, go listen to it. Go listen. I'm going to pull up right now. Play it. Play up. Play up the part where I talk about. If I played on this syndrome, stand, insecurity, and I how play, he probably, and that's why he probably acts above everybody to try to project. This, if I play this, you're, gonna be able to hit. you're also put, it, you're also putting it. like you're building imposter syndrome in other people. Yeah, you when you tell them I like invented, they definitely, yeah. they definitely should you're, have imposter syndrome. You can't you're place imposter syndrome me, on others. You're the, diagnosing and accusing at yes. the same time. The implication I'm not from your he did not deserve to be there. Exactly your implications. Okay, can I jump in real quick? Because I, I I do like the fact that Billy invited Francis on a date. That's very touching. I don't know, I don't know what you two would be up to. Maybe maybe uh, bottle night. You two just yeah, we'd <laughs> hang out, night. drink a bottle I just, of wine. I think Francis and I need to spend time with each other off air. You know, holding hands while running around the field after a fight. You you, you always say this to me. You always say like, look, wild thing always away say. from all of this. <laughs> you you'd realize that I'm I'm you know quite a normal guy or i'm actually quite smart and all of these strange things that I, I i don't know why you feel the need to tell me those things um because <laughs> billy the, the truth is that i i am quite fond of you and i do like you and i always have and i even wrote that in the blog i i made sure to emphasize that by the way uh but unfortunately i get the sense that i've i've offended you and i am sorry for that uh, I tried in that blog to make a bunch of descriptive, funny jokes and paragraphs about you on the basketball court and calling you an insane person and then qualified. It was roasty. And, you know, uh, if that if that ruffled your feathers, I, I am sorry. I, you know, honestly, I flew off the handle <laughs> on it and I wanted to talk about it. And, yeah, you know what? It's just but but, but it's, you know uh it's this is this is great this is fine so can i take you on a date francis <laughs> i don't know that we have enough in common <laughs> we might have a lot more and that's what we'll find out i on think the date. i think that this is the thing too where you 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 often you often tell me that you're you're smart and 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 all this like williams and you kind of cite your credits i don't i don't think you're not i don't know where that comes from so this need to like prove these things to me is i don't feel like i have to prove anything to you it's because when we you even said it on the yak when i was talking about robots and sperm you're like whenever you try to mansplain something to me it makes me aggressively angry and i'm like yeah, but maybe I'm, we can get through I'm, I'm that teasing i'm teasing you because it's fun and that's what everybody does because you rise to it all right it's funny because francis also like very delicately accused Billy of having imposter syndrome right there too, which is great. It's like you guys are both saying, I do think you have more in common than you guys think. <laughs> yeah, I'm, you're glad, right. I'm glad we're having this discussion. You're right, PFT. Uh, but I'm telling him not to feel that way. First mm -hmm. of all, because I like you for who you are. I, I, I don't, I don't need to hang out with an intellectual equal or something like that. I'm not even saying you're not. Uh, but it's not a prerequisite for us to hang out that you cite your academic credits. Francis, I want to be honest. This has gotten, I was just shooting shots back after <laughs> I was like, now we're in this deep conversation 
And of course, this was this was always where it was gonna go. I didn't know it was gonna go here. Let's. Hey, you didn't know when, it was gonna when go. Billy, you didn't know this when was Billy meets accountability face to face, he goes, "You know what? What this am I being held way... accountable for?" By the <laughs> way, what we shit you was talking. What did you, dude? I talked that shit. I back go, dude. I never said. Do you know the definition of imposter syndrome? Now it's we're back when to square one. I literally. Can you you didn't say it out loud. What you said you verbatim. didn't say it. You yes, didn't I say did. it. I it literally. A... You didn't bring up the parts where I talked about insecurity Fuck being you, in. Billy. Dude, literally, go back, no. dude. You never got gaslighting. No, I'm not so, gaslighting you, bro. Y'all was debating China. I'm gonna pull it up. Pull it up. I'm gonna pull it up right Francis, now. Can we? Can you at least right now, Francis? Can you at least apologize for not catching the pole when Billy knocked it over on the high jump? Like that was yeah, an egregious that, dereliction of your responsibility. Why were you even there? <laughs> <laughs> because they it's a good question, Big T. They they asked me to do the measuring. I, I feel like I came across as though I had volunteered. I certainly had not. <laughs> and uh up to that point, nobody had had a problem not not toppling the entire thing. <laughs> and and sure enough, Billy did and then was mad at me. <laughs> Because he invented the idea that I was meant to stand upon it. So the only okay, so Francis background back Which in the I've never seen anyone do that at all. There's a no there's back a in the plate Duncan, on it. There's a weight. There's a 25 pound plate dude, on the measuring thing back, to measure, anchor it. Back in the in the last combine we did with D and D, I was doing what you were doing, and I caught it several times when people were hitting it. It's, so it's I your thought fault for not being in as my good as mind, Billy. In my mind, and I knew you weren't probably doing it, but in my mind, I was like, why didn't he catch it? Because that was what I would do when it would fall down when we were doing the dunk. Like, Billy I think would Coley run towards knocked the it down. <laughs> well, I think said, Coley knocked it down. So this is, I, this is the, the, the apex of Billy's. He said, in my mind, no, it was not in your mind. You literally said it out loud and accused the man. I, I, because I thought he was supposed to be doing that because when I was working it, <laughs> five years ago or when i was 18 years old as an intern i was catching it if nothing else you entertain this and i think uh, coley was the only one that that might have missed but that's because he had vertigo and couldn't look up so francis if only you could have done as good a job as billy mm -hmm. yeah none of this would have happened well one one can't help but wonder why if billy had that knowledge prior to the test he didn't forewarn me yeah, that no, that's on me. might topple and say, this is what I've learned in my experience. That's, that's on me. That's measuring on me. the vertical jump. Yeah, I Francis, just a, heads, just a heads up, but I'm kind of built different. And I'm really strong, so I might have to knock this over when I jump. That is Billy's fault for not warning you about that. Yeah. What's, what's this? Uh, I think Billy's listening to a clip of him of himself from last week. I need uh, to I, find I, this because I, this so, is this is ridiculous. I, You're I, on I, it. You, you found you, it. I, I think you gonna, know, I'm you gonna listen to that, Billy, and you'll be like, "Oh shit, I have to figure out a way to spin this." So. All right, so I, I do think that um, we have, I, Francis. I'd like to bring you back on at some point. We got to figure out the right format in which to do it in because I I enjoy listening to the two of you have these discussions. Um, I don't know if that's like we prepare an actual debate. Like we, we give you guys the topic ahead of time, something that we know that you'll disagree upon and then have an actual academic debate about that situation. I think that might be a good way, right? I would personally prefer that is an outstanding idea, PFT. I would also potentially like maybe if Francis and Billy could both send over a list of all the memorable interactions you've ever had and where we could just find maybe some discrepancies between the two accounts and let them uh, discuss what actually happened. In hey, Big T, why don't we like pitch you in a pit against a grizzly bear and just watch you fight to the death for absolutely no reason? What the You're talking about a debate. <laughs> what? You're talking about a debate just, on a what's... on a on a podcast where we debate each other. This is something interesting. After after seeing Billy get all riled up over the course of the whole uh, combine, we went to dinner that night. And I asked him in a, a quieter moment, I said, why do you let it all get to you so much? And he said, because it's been years like this and I just, I can't help it. You know, I get, I just find myself getting really angry. And I said, well, if you stop showing that, I think people will stop pressing your buttons. And I think he said, he's, he's not capable. 
<laughs> I had that conversation at least four times. Uh, the time stamp is one twenty two fifty. When before we're talking about the article, and then I asked what he go to Harvard for, and you chimed in and said lacrosse, and that's when you go on your diatribe about how he don't deserve to be there, and I would love to see this spin zone. So. You it's interesting play. because uh, Francis. Hey, hey, is. It's just I know so many dudes like Francis that they go to Harvard and they like try to put on this, you know, Harvard man mystique because it's, it's a, a nipple whole thing. baby. You say he's a nipple no, baby? No, no, no. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that like a lot of guys, they go to Harvard, they're like, holy shit, I'm in Harvard because I'm good at a sport and I'm do decent on standardized taste testing and I've got good grades. And then they're there and they realize like, holy shit, like, do I really deserve to be here? And then they put on a whole, like, I'm a Harvard man. I've seen it to like three of my friends who went there, more like teammates who I then met after. And I was like, oh shit. What's their names? I'm not going to say their names out loud because they don't need to be put on blast <laughs> like that. But you, can see, their, you can see sources. their LinkedIn. So I basically said they deserve to be there, but they're like, oh shit, am I supposed to be there? There's doubt in their mind. And we'll continue. You're like, that's not who you really are, dude. <laughs> Do you think hypothetically anybody would look at um, somebody else who is good at sport? Am I fucking crazy? Is, is, no. am, please tell me I'm not fucking crazy. I didn't say he didn't deserve to be there. I said he had creeping doubts and like imposter syndrome. <laughs> oh, really? This is <laughs> unbelievable. That's, that's insane, This bro. is it literally is insane. insane. <laughs> You know what? How is that insane? Just talking about it's someone it's who's creepy. like you I didn't just mention it. You didn't. Syndrome. You didn't mention imposter syndrome. Oh yeah, Lil. I just paused it because I do in the next sentence. You just that may have tested well on something, gone to a good school, and been like, "That's not who you really are." Just anybody oh, no, else? No, absolutely, absolutely. But I would. That's but Billy saying it's him. Is too. that who I really am? It's no. Do I do I, do I, do I try to? Uh, we get off the topic. Yeah. I'm gonna do this because I'm tired of being called a fucking liar. Because I you mentioned are a fucking liar, oh dog. Because because, <laughs> because also what you just did. Hold on, hold on, pause, pause that. Pause, pause that. Pause it. Pause it. Because like, also what you around. did. Also what you did when you conveniently left out the beginning when I asked. What what Aaron, he's not listening. Okay. Billy, pause that. I did that. mention lacrosse. Stop <laughs> playing it, Billy. Mute yourself, Billy. Billy, mute yourself. You can do this all day. Just mute yourself. We just muted Yo. him. Yo, my man, my man's conveniently left at the beginning when he said, uh, I asked him what he went to school for, and it was condescendingly lacrosse. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I will, like, I, I like big, big T. I will not be gaslit. No, yeah, I, me neither. I have no dog in this fight. We will I, not be gaslit. Can I be honest I a, with you guys right now? Me, me meeting Francis, I had a great time, Francis. That's my dog. Billy's my dog. I don't have no dog in this fight, but you ain't gonna tell me I ain't hear what I heard. Like, you ain't gonna do that. I'm just gonna just be being honest. I don't totally understand the point that Billy's making that he didn't say something. What is Billy concerned about? Like, what is Billy called, trying to prove himself? I'll tell you right, right now, PFT, it's called accountability. He was <laughs> talking about Francis and his Harvard uh, his Harvard uh, credibility, right? Francis come on a show, he's backpedaling. And now he's saying, no, I told you he deserved to be there. When, in fact, he's listening right now and said the exact opposite. Wait, wait, but to Billy's credit, though, he did say lacrosse, test scores, and good grades. That's 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 beside the point. It was it was he said it in a condescending way. He said, I I, I have good grades. I got recruited here for lacrosse. I have okay grades. I do decent at standardized testing. He is that is a direct condescension of of people who are in the Harvard. I think we're misunderstanding. The no. like, okay, so I'm realizing that it comes after my comments was at the end of the episode. You're like, keep this part in. Where does it say keep this part in? Where you say you don't want to keep. May the I? May in? I ask a question really quick? I, I would like to ask Francis. Now that you listened to it, how do you take what Billy said? Yeah, that's, I guess that's all that matters. Uh, it's it doesn't bother me. Uh, you know, I I, I guess. This is like a classic thing where you think you're saying something uh, and then everyone else thinks something else. And I think I could apply it to myself on so many occasions. Uh, I certainly in my blog about Billy thought I was being playful and uh, he took it personally. And therefore he returned fire by discrediting my probably greatest achievement in life 
which was being admitted to Harvard um, and and saying, well, it was because I was a lacrosse player. That is and to, to Billy's point. Uh, there was a lot of I did have a lot of imposter syndrome. And I think that um, when I remember when I got admitted the day I got admitted, my parents were waiting to hear. I've told this story before, but I was I was at school and we got the email and my parents were waiting to hear. Um, and I got the email and said I'd been admitted and I didn't tell them because I was so kind of torn up about it. It was a very strange thing. And then later that night, we all went to dinner as a family and the waitress asked if we were celebrating anything. And my parents said, well, our son just got admitted to college. And she said, oh, which one? And I said, it doesn't matter. And I was so upset about it that I got up from the table and like walked I had to go cool off because I just felt like I had cheated my way in from lacrosse. So uh, I think that that origin feeling that Billy is talking about is true. Whether that is the reason that I have adopted some veneer of condescension and and feigned intellect, um, I guess only a psychologist would know. But I would say to Billy that I try to keep that as a comedic tool and people that i'm friends with unfortunately i would say i'm probably the least successful person of my friend group well, and flex. when i go to when i go to like a harvard reunion i sit at the table with people who have had drug addictions and criminal records and we are the losers because I followed comedy and everyone else is in hedge funds and tech and VC, doctors, lawyers, and I am in the 1%. I am a bottom feeder among my peers. So it's very, it's very apparent to me that I am, I do not belong and even more now. Um, and I can promise you that for whatever I show, online or in my written work or whatever shots I may take, I have a very low opinion of myself. Well, uh, we should go on a date sometime. We have a lot more in common than you think, but Billy's, uh, Billy's I see, think see, it's hard, low self I never, yeah, let's go as on. someone who is also an athlete that was recruited and sort of was in a similar situation. I was honestly trying to explain something that I myself felt. I thank you. That's that's what I've been saying this entire time. It's like <laughs> Billy, it's like a dog seeing itself in the mirror and being like, fuck that dog. I hate that dog. Look how it walks around with its tail up, that piece of shit. <laughs> but I was just nope. yeah. Nope. But by saying when I said what did you go to school for? And I said lacrosse that response was more describing an element of, cause I don't know what you studied in college. Yeah. Okay. All right. It's but, one of those things. Okay. All right. Well, um, I think we've probably reached the end of this thread of the conversation. Can we get back to calcification um, of the pineal gland? Also, also Francis is, uh, Francis is a very funny guy. He, he downplays himself, but he's one of the funnier people that works here. So, um, follow his stand up career, follow his, uh, all of his content. We love you, Francis. Appreciate you, PFT. Thanks, Thanks for guys. Um, do you want to Let's talk you about again, brother? Uh, do you anything you want to plug? Anything cool that people like Billy's got Madison, a, a movie Wisconsin coming out? this weekend? No, check out check out Son of a Boy Dad. We just had a really cool band on uh, a very young band called Laundry Day. That <gasps> episode should be out tomorrow. Um, they're awesome. So uh, yeah, give us give us some love on there. All right, sounds good. Thank you, Francis. Thanks, guys, see you soon. Bye. Thank you, Francis. Bye. All right, Billy, I think that went well. Dude, why did you <laughs> guys bring him on, man? That was fucked. Oh, is it the consequences of your own actions? I just want to have a debate. No, but here I, I thought Francis we were going to talk about like, China. Oh, dude. No, it's not the consequence of my own hey, actions. I, stay, I never discredited why he was there. Everyone the has a compilation. You? Dude, mean, you bro? put that on me. I just said, I didn't say condes. Like, you put that on me. I, I thought we were going to debate You're China muted. and the United States at war. Good. And I, because if you, if you, if you, I'm still sticking by. I didn't mean he I didn't deserve to care. be there. I don't care what you stick by, dog. It's what you said. You know what I'm saying? And he even, he felt it. And like, what you what he said was, yeah, he maybe 
correct in a little bit of way, but you still pointed that out. And that was the point. It was condescending. It absolutely was. And your whole point was like, do I deserve to be here? And you said in positive way, maybe at the end, that had nothing to do with the original point with what you said and why he was there. I don't care, bro. But like, my thing is like, if you're going to say something, stand on it. And either- I am standing on it. I'm standing on it. That's, that's the I'm problem. I'm standing on it. I said- All right, yeah. All right. All right. my, my issue is like, dog, you be you be backpedaling a lot of shit you do. If you feel uh, what you feel, bro, stand on that shit. And if you and if you wrong, say I was wrong. It is what it is. Like, why, why you be so I, like you dig your heels in the shit? You I'm digging my dig heels in because I didn't. You you literally did this for five really, minutes. You dude, literally did this for five minutes and found out you was you said exactly no, what I said. You said okay, but no, I said right. exactly. Okay. I said that he deserved to be there. He had good grades. He had all this, but you know he had that creeping doubt. Maybe I'm not supposed to be right. here. Okay. All right. <laughs> Let's talk about calcification of the pe pineal gland, Billy. Yeah, dude. They fucking pumped Ireland full of fluoride so they stopped being rebellious. And that is how Americans and Australians are being subjugated to not rebel against their government. Okay, go on. No, I just, that's off the cuff. Okay. Um, so, okay, where, where are we at with the fluoride debate? <laughs> Fluoride's fucking bullshit. Why do you think it's fucking bullshit? Because we should consent to anything that's being put into our body. Okay. They should, if yeah, they should just put creatine in the water. Should we have to? But we'd have to consent to that. I think everyone would. Uh, Big T, where are you at with fluoride? I think it's probably bad but it hasn't affected me to the point that i care to do something about it <laughs> right like what are we gonna do like having so having a little bit too much fluoride is probably better for you than having no fluoride but again we get our fluoride from other sources too besides just tap water but having a little bit too much isn't like hugely detrimental to people but it is it seems like there are some bad side effects from it, but in the grand scheme of things, I mean, of the shit the government's doing, this is so far down the list. How do you even get upset about it? Yeah, uh, there are some states right now, Georgia, Nebraska, Missouri, North Carolina, that have recently proposed bills that would affect fluoridation in their respective states, but are in the early stages of approval. In 2023, Washington State passed House Bill 1251, to set notification requirements for public water systems that want to start adding fluoride to their drinking water or systems that would like to discontinue adding fluoride to their drinking water. And in July of 2023, public water systems considered starting or discontinuing fluoride in their water on a continuing basis must notify their customers at least 90 days prior to a vote or a decision on the matter. Um, but it is interesting that like when people study it, because from what I've seen, there haven't been too many like exhaustive studies about uh, the benefits and the uh, the detriments of fluoride in your water. But when people study it, then it becomes like a political thing or uh, somebody referred to it as being like uh, more like religion than science. And then if you study fluoride's effect on cells and teeth, then it becomes a difficult field for a lot of scientists to work in because if you say that it shouldn't happen – then people equate you to being anti-vax or like anti-science. And if you say that um, it should happen more than people like call you a sellout um, and, and make your life a little bit more difficult that way. But it's more like people are afraid to disagree with it when I think that the jury is more out on this than a lot of other things. You know what? To me, it all ties back to it's the same group of people that are like um, the holistic medicine people, right? Like crystal doctors. I feel like crystal holistic medicine people and anti-vaxxers get lumped in with uh, having discussions of like fluoride treatment in your water. And so if you have a counterpoint of view on fluoride, then they're like, oh, you weren't, you're one of those like crystal freaks that um, is like anti-science. When I think that this is a separate debate because a lot of those people happen to believe in not having fluoride in your water. So you're like, I don't want to be lumped in with those people because they have all these other beliefs that I disagree with. Where in this case, people that tend to believe that they, they might have a point. There hasn't been enough studies on it. And the studies that have come out have been kind of inconclusive. So it's, it's a way more interesting debate than I thought that it would be when I started researching it. Is there, has there been any meta analysis? There has been. Yeah. 
did you happen to see the conclusions of it? I, I, this is pure inquiry. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I read a couple yesterday and um, I'm not like an expert on it, but yeah. they were saying like there might be some small detrimental effects if you get too much fluoride in your system. If you have like beneath the prescribed um, amount of fluoride that you're consuming per day, then it's fine and it could cause some some side effects. But if you get like slightly elevated versions, then it might be it might be detrimental. And if you're a pregnant woman that gets too much fluoride, like a, a big dose of fluoride, then it could have some negative effects on the baby too. Yeah, I, from the small bit that I have read, it, it was like the low dosages have are kind of inconsequential. But I got, again, like I don't know enough about it to make a. This is one of those things like. I don't know. Yeah, I think if everybody, I don't know, I don't know enough to, to to sway either way. It's like if everyone has a low dose, like the recommended dose, then it then it has good effects on your teeth. But by putting it in your drinking water, then you could get unknowingly high dosages when you combine it with other stuff that you use, which could be bad for you. So I guess just test your shit. Just test your water, I guess. See how much fluoride's in there. See how much fluoride you're getting per day. Yeah, there's a way. I think every every state or county or whatever has like a a thing that to to see how much they they put in. Do they not? I'm I'm sure they test that. Yeah. All right. So you can look up your local drinking water and see like the other chemicals that are in there too. Um, Billy, this is a question for you. Billy, can I get you locked back in? Yes. Um. So it, when I was looking this stuff up, I came across a lot of uh, Huberman videos. Mm -hmm. Right. Huberman. Where did where did Huberman come from? Stanford. He is a biologist. No, I think he's a he's biologist. A, he's a neuroscientist. Neuro, yeah. Uh, but I know I know like his educational background. But where I feel like I nobody knew about this guy until like a year ago. He was a, no. He's been around. He was on Rogan more, longer ago than that. He's been a, a Stanford professor, and he's just done a lot of studies on the human body and what to do. Well, and like the brain. To keep your mind. Yeah. Well, your brain, but like how your body affects your brain. Right. So he's done a lot of work on cold plunge in uh sauna. And uh he's he also like thinks that steroids are good. Right. So <laughs> is he, older. Right. So he is um but he's a neuroscientist, right? So I guess a lot of the criticism of him comes from the fact that he gets out of his out of his discipline sometimes and talks about other things. Well when he talks about, you know, dopamine and like how certain exercise affects your mental state i think he's allowed to talk about it like because look why i mean after a certain point you just exercise to feel good and that's mostly what he comments on okay but it can it would it be fair to be like um will compton's entire uh like medical mindset comes from the brain of somebody like of huberman yeah okay all right so he's like he's like a man's man doctor yeah, he's. I think he talks a lot about functional uh, health, which a lot of doctors don't really consider science, but it's treating issues at the base instead of just the symptoms. Got it. Yeah, I was I was looking into him the other day, and he makes I, he makes some really interesting videos that I've watched. Uh, but I, at the same time, I was like, I didn't hear anything about this guy until like a year ago, and I just didn't know like how does a neuroscientist. Be like, you know what? I'm going to start a podcast. And then within like a year, he's got millions and millions of listeners. Well, that's because he went on Rogan for his writings. Okay, got it. So he's he's the uh, pro steroid uh, under correct supervision man's man's doctor. Yeah. That just gets into stuff that he finds interesting. He does studies that like he does bro science and, and there's dudes out there that appreciate that. Yeah, he's he's the world world preeminent bro scientist. Where did the, and where did this guy uh is he tied in with Lex Friedman at all? I think they're buddies. They're just part of the same Rogan cast. They run the same crew. Yeah. Okay. Um interesting. All right. Uh so Arian, I know you got to get running here in a second. Yeah. Um appreciate you joining us. In conclusion, is Arian Foster still drinking tap water? Um Yeah, I am. I mean, I've been drinking it my whole life, and I don't know, man. I I, just, I I haven't seen evidence to the contrary. Like I understand 
it's really good for our teeth. I, I have a couple of homies who are dentists. They're advocates of it. Um, uh, my my stepfather's an advocate for a PhD geneticist. Like I said, like I think a lot of the times, I think this goes for a lot of shit, right? You only can research as much as you can, but there's a certain point where you kind of are at the whims of the experts and you just have to make the best decision. And to me, that's the most rational decision is to trust that side of it as of now. I don't have the expertise to to understand it on any kind of deeper level than I kind of got to go with whatever the experts say on this one. Yeah, it, it's hard to like know everything about everything. Yeah. And also it becomes a debate of like common good versus individual liberty. Like if something's good for the common good, but you don't want it, like should you, in what cases should you be forced to accept something for the common good? That's true. I mean, there's, there's, I think as, as we continue to evolve in the next 10, 15 years, these debates are going to keep popping up more and more and more uh, because now the the general public is involved or aware more, whereas, you know, people had lives and jobs and, and stuff before and they just weren't aware of all this stuff that's going on. And now we are. We're privy to all this information. But sometimes too much information can be a bad thing, in my opinion. So it's going to get interesting. My opinion will gland freezes, man. I don't know. I'll holler at y'all. All I'm right. <laughs> be on the lookout for it. All right. Thank you, Aaron. No doubt, man. Be easy. All right. Billy, see you. you ain't going to find it, dog. All right. So um, now it's me, Big T, Billy, Mad Dog McKenzie. Aaron's dipping out. Do we want to do voicemails? Yeah, I have, I have some if you want to do them. Okay. Let's do voicemails. Also, update. Clemmer did sign a waiver before he went in. He did? Yes. Okay. What did the waiver say? Um... I don't know. Gaz just said, FYI, Clemmer signed a waiver. If he dies, he dies. Okay. Have you all seen what's going on right now, though? Yeah. No. Clemmer is the number one So trend Dave on said Twitter. he would put the stream back if they got Clemmer to the number one trend in the U.S. for an hour, and he is the number one trend right now, so it has to last for an hour. Hmm. I'm going to tweet it real quick. This podcast is brought to you by BetterHelp. BetterHelp, you've heard us talk about it here on this show. A lot of us spend our times in our lives wishing that we had more time the question is time for what if time was limited how would you use it the best way to squeeze that special thing into your schedule is to know what's important to you and make it a priority therapy can help you find what matters to you so you can do more of it if you're thinking of starting therapy give better help a try it's entirely online it's designed to be convenient flexible and suited to your schedule just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at no additional charge there's no better time than now. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash dose today. Get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash dose. All right, voicemails. Hey, what's up, Dr. Dosen? This is Nick. I'm from St. Louis. Sitting here kind of just listening to some music, um, vibing out, but was wondering... If you guys could listen to one song for the first time again, what would it be? Stay handsome, stay beautiful, love y'all, love the pod. Thank y'all. I am I am addicted to watching like the YouTube videos of man listens to song for the first time. Yeah. And you get to watch them experience it. I love those because it feels like you're you're feeling it again for the first time. But one song that you would want to listen to again, probably Freebird. Because I'd just be like, when the fuck is the solo going to end? And it just keeps going and going and going. Uh, Chicken Fried by Zach Brown Band. Mm. Is that your favorite? That's one of my favorite songs ever, yeah. Billy? Rooster, Alex and Chains. Why is that? Just fucking blows your mind. Here comes the rooster. You ever do a, a Mac squat to Rooster by Alice in Chains? I've not, no. Fucking blow your brain out. Gets you going. At the base of your squat. Um, what about what about you guys, my dog McKenzie? Shocking mine's Taylor Swift, but Champagne Problems by Taylor Swift. Why'd you pick that one? Um, I rem because I remember how I felt the first time I listened to it and it was like a guttural reaction. Yeah. And it's such a sad song. So I think I would like to go back and experience that again and or experience it live for the first time again because that was also crazy. Just a good, sad song. 
I think mine is similar because I remember the first time hearing it, which is, this is very random. Uh, but the one, uh, I think it's called the one Justin Bieber. Is it called Am I the One or something? Oh. Uh, with like DJ Khaled. I'm the one. I'm the one. Why that <laughs> no, song? I, because I literally remember like I was in college and I was like uh, in I don't even know. We like had just woken up, my roommate and I, and we were so hungover. And we like turned that song on and it just came out. We were just like laying in our beds, like so <laughs> sick. And we we're like, this song is so good. Like this is amazing. You, so you want to go back to your hungover yes, college dorm? Yes. But I don't know why I remembered that one. It was just like we were vibing in our that's, room. <laughs> that's so random. I haven't thought about that song in like seven years. Yeah. 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 Watch, watching people experience. I, you know what? I want to find... Who who do you think listens to the least amount of music at Barstool? Frank. Oh no. Out of at Barstool? That's an interesting question. There's gotta be a couple of people that are just like, I don't like music, which are weird, that's, weird people. That seems me. like something Jake Malisek would say. Yeah. Oh Blutman. Oh, there's another Jake. I was oh, gonna say Blutman. Blutman and Blutman. J- Jake Marsh. Oh yeah. I think Jake Marsh is a big I don't like music guy. My brother's like that. that. My brother said that he doesn't look, listen to music because it's distracting. From what? <laughs> anything i don't know he's like i don't listen to music it distracts I, me i got into a weird thing where i could only listen to podcasts but then i got back you got it's back weird. into music i but just like didn't want to listen to music but you've never been like i don't like music at all you can be like i don't like this genre of music but it's it's a completely different mindset to me somebody that says like i just don't like music I think Jake is that guy. Jake or, or Blutman, we should just get them to listen to. Blutman would probably say like, something. I feel like, like that, Jake yeah. actually listens to a lot of music because he plays guitar. Mm. Jake Malisek. Marsh, I'm not sure. Yeah, Mar- Marsh, not the same. I don't think Blutman does anything. Like, what's he doing when he leaves work? He's studying <laughs> Rice's depth chart. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's watching Russian tennis. I'm trying to think of people at the New York office. Like, speaking of, do you think Clemmer? Clemmer might not be a music guy. Oh no, I bet he listens to a lot of like seventies and eighties yeah. music, like like weird shit, like King Crimson. I think he just seems like I, I bet he hasn't listened to a new song in twenty years, but yeah. he hey guys, listens to music. Really quick, does Clemmer have anyone watching him who could like run in just in case he like yes tries to self harm? Okay, whoa. Also, yes, yeah. there are people watching him, but also twenty four seven. Yes. Yeah. Also, Clemmer is not the one that you should be worried about. Clemmer's fine. Who should we be worried about? It's you said it. You said the people will go crazy before he will. Yeah, yeah. I actually do believe that about Clemmer because he was all right. So in the first couple of days, I watched him do like a full Johnny Carson show on his own. He seems to be entertaining himself pretty well. It's everybody that's watching that's mm-hmm. like, what the fuck is this guy doing? He's like talking about middle relievers from the 1972 Cincinnati Reds and having the time of his life reading his book. And everyone's just like, I can't take any more ERA stats from the American League. Please stop. Yeah, I don't really think I, I don't know. And we we are campaigning against a, we're campaigning against Dave to get it back alive. Clemmer is none the wiser any of this is happening. Yeah, yeah. Clemmer is like, this is what Clemmer wants to be doing right now. He signed up for, mm-hmm. for doing the, the 100 hours. So in my, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like I'm supporting Clemmer. I'm supporting Clemmer. Yeah. yeah. I want Clemmer to be great. I want people to see the greatness that is the Clemmer stream. Dave like tweeted like Clemmer just basically took a paid vacation. <laughs> like, yeah. He was on his own. Actually, do you guys think that you could survive 100 hours in, in solitary? No. no. Absolutely not. Not a lick. With uh, the supplies he has, no. If I had my phone and stuff, absolutely. Well, yeah, yeah. that's a whole different For game. sure. Uh, Maybe so if I had Skyrim. What are the what are the things that he's allowed to have? Because he does have that book in there. So he was allowed to bring in like one personal item. I think he had like a baseball encyclopedia. Yeah. And like that was like it. He has a notepad. Yeah, and like stuff to write. And on. then they give him rice to count. Yeah, so I think the, the danger that you run into is that in a situation like that, I would probably try to do a lot of writing. But also writing would be like the least interesting thing for people to watch you do on the stream. So it's almost like you have to get boring. That's, Actually, yeah. yeah. The only way I could do it is I would just like lay down and like close my eyes. Yeah. Yeah. That's if the only I, way. If I had all the Red Dead Redemptions, Skyrim, the new GTA, a squat rack with a lot of weight, 
So Billy's and is at his a house. couple dumbbells. Yeah. <laughs> and three square meals a day. I think I definitely could do a hundred hours. Yeah, no shit. That's just not the <laughs> same thing. You, play, you think you could play video games for a week and and work and out? Yeah. That's th- but that's what it would take. It would just take like your living room. <laughs> and and yeah. I'd pro I, I don't really play video games that much, but and uh, maybe like for the last day, just like a couple thirty racks scores light. Yeah, yeah. You're talking about quarantine. You're talking about like the it. There was a time I remember it was like maybe March or April of 2020 when the internet went out in my apartment during like you were essentially shut in. You could go outside, but there was really nothing going Two on. Two weeks to slow the spread. I remember in New finally. York and my internet went out and I was like, mm-hmm. well, this is the beginning of the end for me right now. Cause if you don't have that connection, everything runs on the internet now. Like I couldn't watch TV. It was tough. It was a tough like hour. Did they slow the spread though? I think they did slow the spread. Oh really? I think could so. have fooled me. It got everywhere eventually, but um, I think it did, or it, it like limited uh, the beds that were being used in like the, the ICUs and hospitals. That was uh, that was Trump's idea, right? I don't recall. Yeah, I don't care if it was. It was a poor one. All right, so um, we have anything else we want to do? Any other voicemails? I have more voicemails. All right. I think I found the quote. Okay. Mm- well, it's where I talk about whether we should keep it in the episode. Wait, we're still doing this? I found <laughs> it. I won't play it. I won't play it. Hey, guys. This is Connor from Orlando. Uh, and before I ask my question, I just want to say I work for myself and by myself. So I always say that you guys are my coworkers. So appreciate you keeping me company, uh, you know, throughout the work week. Um, I thought of this question a, a couple months ago when Big T was saying that Arian just, like, called him out of the blue to talk ball on a college college football Saturday. Um, so I was just wondering if you guys had anything in your professional career or personal career now that younger you would be super proud of or just think is the coolest thing ever. Um, thanks, you guys, again. Appreciate you. Love you. I mean, just this job is pretty sick. Yeah, I was just to say, literally this job. We get to talk to, like, sometimes I think of the people we've talked to on the show. Like, we've talked to Stone Cold. We've talked to the... uh, George Santos. Yeah, a congressman who, like, did the craziest shit of all time. Like, physicists and all all sorts of crazy people. Like, I got to go to the World Series because I have this job. When the break, like, you just get to do cool shit that's awesome. Yeah, I, two things jumped to my mind. Uh, one, drinking out of the Stanley Cup, the nights, the night that the uh, Capitals win the Stanley Cup in Las Vegas. That was that's going to be tough to top. That's pretty sick. That's like that's right up there with with anything that I think I'll ever do. And then uh, the other thing was uh, just getting text messages from Chris Berman. <laughs> pretty pretty cool. Pretty cool. <laughs> Like when Dave uh, announced on Twitter that I signed a contract, I got a text from Chris Berman being like, congratulations, PFT. Uh, I'm proud of you. Something like, like La Racatour. That's what he calls me. He gave me a French nickname. Oh, really? <laughs> and he was he just said like really nice things. And I was like, did I just get a text from Chris Berman that congratulating me on my contract? That's fucking amazing. <laughs> it's unreal. Like what a nice guy. What about you, Billy? Honestly, I wish I could talk to myself uh in my college dorm room when i wasn't doing so well and just tell them about you know seeing the pyramids and how awesome things are and like balling out in uganda and like all the cool stuff i do working on going back to barstool like stuff that i'm doing now in my personal life and just like tell that dude like yo dude it gets like just hang in there dude. it gets better it's awesome it gets better at some at some point. You'll, you're going to knock out Jose Canseco. Yeah, <laughs> there was there was some low times, specifically because I, I my football career wasn't panning out, and I was just like down in the dumps because yeah. it, it was my entire life at that time. And I was just like, it, 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 it it's awesome, but definitely like all the adventures I've gone on, you know, meeting like Josh Allen, like working on part of my take, like macrodosing, like. It's it's awesome. 
All right. Um, Mad Dog. Also McKenzie. owning a dog. Probably being like, yo, dude, like going to myself that wasn't allowed a dog at a certain point. Yeah. In my life being like, yo, dude, one day you get this sick American bulldog and he's just your best buddy and you just have so much fun and adventures. And he like does all the things that you envision doing with the dog. Like, you like, you know, he rides in your front seat with you in the car and like you guys go exploring and shit. And like you go running and exercising together, and okay. you like in like cook for each other. One day you will have a dog. Uh, I mean, the fact that I dressed up as PFT less than a year before that was wild. Working for him, like I would probably be like, "Hey, you might want to not post." We those don't pictures. talk about that enough. <laughs> it was Halloween. It was Halloween. Yeah, but like that was cr- that's a crazy timeline of like. October, I dressed up as you for Halloween, and that following June, I was like your intern. Like, it's a crazy turn of events. Manifested that shit. I did, but like that's probably one of those things I'd go back and be like, "This is gonna look really weird because you're gonna know this guy soon." Um, yeah, and then like, ev- I mean, like actually, every single aspect of this job is is insane. Like that, I get to do it, and that it's I get paid to do it, and like. Yeah, no, like what Big T said, like the people we've gotten to meet, like the people that I work with that I've gotten to meet, like you guys and everyone, like it's just all of it's crazy. And that I personally, mm, I don't think I've done anything personal that's worth note, actually. (laughs) Just this, really. Yeah, I would say the same thing. It's actually funny because I dressed up as Big Cat for Halloween once. Did you really? What? Yeah. (laughs) This is wild. Okay, so we have to get... Which I, like, now I'm embarrassed. Like, I'm exposing myself, but... At least you don't work on it part of my take. I was supposed to do it with, like, one of my guy friends was like, oh, we should do Big Cat and PFT. I'm like, oh, that'd be so funny. Then he bailed. So then I was just Big Cat by myself. And then my friend who was a bartender at the bar we always went to, he wore a part of my take shirt and pretended to be Hank. So then I at least had somebody that was there that I was doing the costume We we have to get side-by-side pictures. (laughs) Who wore it best? (laughs) You need to send me the picture. Mad Dog. I actually forgot. That was so long ago. I Yeah, I did do that. That's, find it. that's wild. <laughs> but yeah, I would say this, just this job in general too. It's so fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dressing up for Halloween is apparently the way to manifest a job here. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. One day maybe I'll be Robert Griffin. <laughs> <laughs> you were Big Cat, not PFT? I know. I Because my friend like who suggested it was supposed to be pft what does that mean billy let's unpack (laughs) no usually okay let's unpack that usually in the duo of big cat pft (laughs) costumes yes usually yeah in a lot of couple costumes if it's a couple costume i'd say a hundred percent of the time (laughs) because the long hair the the girl is me yes (laughs) i did it with two girls or so it was That's like iconic. me and my best girlfriend. Just clip Mad Dog saying where does that, she one, know, so. that one part. <laughs> <laughs> where, does, where does she work now? It's 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 Mac. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's so funny. Also, she, she lives here. Yeah. Wait, that's hilarious. Yeah. That, that, that was, so it, it was a girl. She just happened to have. Actually, I don't Dirt know why it was you. I just think I called PFT on that one. Yeah. I think I called Dibs. I, I, <laughs> I just got to see. Like McKinsey as big cat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did you have a mustache on? Yeah, I had a mustache and I like I think I like made a shirt that said Yabo on it. Oh and my then gosh. that's like a deep cut. And then I borrowed like my friend's cups hat or something. What was your what was your best costume, Big T? Um, that's a good question. Cause you seem like a no nonsense kind of guy. And cost wearing a yeah. costume is yeah, I mean, it's, it's heavily hard. nonsense. It's hard to think about because I you know I did. I did. I cut off Halloween pretty early. Yeah. Um. I'd. I'd have to ask. I remember one year I was a hockey player. It was. It was all sports. I, I would imagine. I got to see some throwback big T costumes for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'll see if I can find some. Hey guys, is this is this real? Clemmer, you know we're seeing it more, and it's so true. Clemmer. <laughs> Sounds real. To is that me. real? <laughs> Wait, quick question. What happened to the, what happened to, um, oh, fuck, Jake, Jake, right? Who, who's also doing a stream and you can't guess Jim Thumb? Oh, Jack, uh, Coleman. What? Jack Coleman, Jack Coleman. Did you just say Jim Thumb? <laughs> guess what, motherfuckers? I just read the name. I never heard it. Uh-huh. 
You don't know Jim Tomey? <laughs> when when did he play? What, we since alive? you've been following sports. When, when did he retire? Probably, Probably 2013. He's also like on MLB Network. Yeah. Okay, dude. I'm not a seam head like that. I like the Yankees and I don't know Jim Thumb. So <laughs> I thought you said Jim Thumb or Jim Thumb for a second. I thought you said Jim Thumb. Oh yeah, he said it. Yes. Oh he did? Good. Yeah. Wait, hang on. Here's another one. Clemmer. You know, we're seeing it more and more and it's just so true. Clemmer, folks. How about that? <laughs> That's a good one. That's a better yeah. one. All right. Well, this does it for macrodosing. We will see you guys next Tuesday. Macrodosing. Clemmer. Love you guys. Oh, my God.